What's up everybody, this is Mangoose from the future. This one went way longer than I expected, so I timestamped each hero in a pinned comment, so you can just kind of zerp around however you wish, and I also put a link to the final ranking rearrangement. I also got really drunk as this one went along. What's up, sweet dicks? I'm the Mangoose. You are awesome, and uh, a lot of people keep asking me about doing a tier list for Fault, and I do not feel qualified. <laughs> to do a tier list on my own, so I enlisted the help of these two fine gentlemen, the Bearded Wolverine and Windu the Mace. Now, if you don't know who they are, they're going to tell you who they are. So, uh, why don't we start with Bearded. Bearded, introduce yourself, brother. Well, welcome, everybody. I am the Bearded Wolverine, your Michigan wonder, uh, fall partner and uh, partner panel uh, co-host with these two fine fellows down here. So, welcome, everybody, and I hope you enjoy the show. And Windu. What up, homie? So I'm Wendy the Mace, a.k.a. Windu. Uh, basically just been keeping up with all these projects after Paragon, right? Our dear beloved, a.k.a. Uh, and yeah, just here, chilling. Literally just got in. I was a little bit late, as usual, so go figure. <laughs> but I'm excited to see what, uh, what these results are going to lean towards, because we do also have a live chat kind of tuning in. That might influence some of what we say oh, so yes. that's going to be uh juicy oh yes indeed so uh, let's break this down real quick so s tier what we're considering s tier is a hero that you must pick like every game or you at least need to learn so that you know how to go against them a tier is a great pick and you probably should learn how to go against them B tier is kind of a situational pick, kind of depends on what the enemy team has or what your team has. Uh, C tier is definitely depends on what the enemy team and your team has. You can only pick them in certain situations. And D tier is just trash, never pick, never, you don't even need to learn because nobody's going to play them. Which, this is going to be rough, this is going to be difficult because I think Fault is actually pretty well balanced. Um... I can't yeah. think of anybody. Mm. I can think of one hero I'd put in S tier. I can't think of anybody I would put in D tier. Yeah, I mean, I've, they've they've done a pretty decent job to make sure that every hero is at least viable. And if they aren't necessarily being played, they've done the necessary step to kind of tune them back up, at least to be relevant, right? Right. So, damn, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see as the uh, conversation ensues, right? Right. Thoughts yeah. might change. Yeah, I think it, 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 seeing, I think for me, seeing where we are start start putting these heroes and depending on where we put somebody in C tier, you know, then we get to another hero. And I feel if that's person that that hero is below that C tier person that might go to D tier. Um, or that might be we'll reason see. to we'll see as move them up to B tier. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, we might argue uh, for that as well. So we'll get there. All right. So how we're going to do this, I'm just going to grab see. We, we don't have Boris in D tier. This this is everybody. I got everybody stacked up right here. Oh, We're okay. going to go alphabetically. <laughs> and I'll pull them up. And then just all three of us, it'll go it'll go me, Windu, Bearded. And we'll give just our off the top tier. And then we'll argue our case for why we think it's that tier. How does that sound? Does that sound good to everybody? Works for okay. me. Does Fair. that sound good to you, chat? Don't have time to wait for chat. Right. <laughs> Waiting 10 <laughs> seconds for the reply. Twitch problems. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Boris, I think he is actually B tier now. I think he at one. Okay. I'm not going to argue my case. I think he's B tier now. Mm. Okay. Bearded. No, you're next. Uh, I'm next. Okay. It's uh, <laughs> not how alphabetical works. Uh, I would probably. I'm going to say, based off of your qualifications and category, I'm going to put the bear into A, personally. I agree. I think he's also A. He's a very strong, strong character. Okay, we're going to keep him in A for now. My thing with the bear, um, I think at one point in time in Fault's history, he was definitely S tier. Like, S tier mm -hmm. as fuck. But people are starting to learn to play against them. People know that, like, when you get sniffed, you just get the fuck away from him. You wait for it to run out, and then and then you shut him down. His biggest asset, I think, why I would put him B tier is it it a Boris pick. Like I think there's other heroes that could do better in the jungle than Boris, but he is extremely good 
when the enemy team has like a lot of stuns. Like if you're up against a a Bellica support or a Bellica like uh, mid lane and like a Decker support and like a Richter off lane, like Boris is amazing because he can just completely immune all of that CC and still get in on the carry. Other than that, I think he's just pretty a pretty average jungler, which I would put him at B tier. Interesting. Like my my whole thing as to why I would put him in A is because there's very few characters in fault that once you have two to three items, they're just online. It doesn't matter if that character was behind. It doesn't matter if they were ahead. Once that two to three care two to three, two to three item like standpoint kicks in, you could be the worst bear player ever. That bear is gonna put in some work. That bear will go from zero and six to eight and six real fucking quick. And that's why I'm putting him in A because it's, I feel like the bear at this point isn't about whether a good player can make him good. It's just to the point where it just lasts long enough in the game and the bear will come online. And that already makes it too good of a character, in my opinion, not even including the shit in the past. Right. Right. No, I agree. Uh, um, I do. I do. I do understand what uh, Goose is saying about him being a, uh, I guess we'll call it average jungler compared to the rest. But I, uh, I do think that his ability outside of the jungle is what makes him a tier uh, because he, he can melt through a lot of the characters that we have. Um, and, you know, not, not talking about the tanks, but like any of the, the squishier characters, you know, he's just going right through them and, he gets fed a lot off of that. And I think that why what puts him up there in the A tier. Okay. And it looks like chat agrees. Uh, most of chat is saying A tier, if not S tier, we got one, one vote for uh, S tier from D trigger, but uh, yep. everybody else is saying A tier. You two say A tier. I will concede that point. We'll put Boris A tier. Let's move on to Countess. Again, I think Countess is B tier. Wendy, what do you think? I I'll be honest. I'd almost. I think B. Here's my thing. I I personally hate Countess, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely biased on this one. She's definitely one of those characters that can start deleting people like crazy. Like any assassin in general is going to noob stop, right? So. So we, we established that S is like must have, right? Right. Yep. Or must learn to play against. Oof. Kind of both. That's rough. Kind of, kind of both. I was, I was about to say that's rough because you 100% need to know how to counter counters. I guess we should talk about the difficulty too because it's not hard to know how to play against counters, right? You fucking stun her whenever she slips onto somebody. Mm -hmm. but, but that's like saying it's not hard to counter Kalari with just a ward there's definitely a lot more skill that comes to the application right, right, right? right. uh i i'm gonna make the argument let's put counter set a because like boris countess is the hey two to three items your carry doesn't exist right now right like easy like this fight you'll turn into a 4v5 in a second just because right. the count exists Pick your tier, and then we'll discuss it. And then I can my pick bad. my I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm we'll sorry. Hey, 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 hey. What did I say? Go ahead. I picked it. Go. Go. What would you say? A. 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 I'm right. saying A. I thought, I thought you were saying, hey, hey, hey. Like you're telling no, me. No, 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 no. My right. Um, I agree with you, actually. I'm going to say A tier as well. Uh, I would have said B tier before patch 14, but w with the changes of patch 14, and I think she got a buff with patch 14, uh, really brought her up. And A tier, is, is she's n definitely viable in the jungle now, and, and she's really huge in the jungle. Um, so I agree. She can melt a carry instantly. Um, so until you guys start focusing uh, her, and you, she also makes you have to... Um, you literally have to, she makes you have to get an item just to stop her from being able to melt you as an ADC. So I, I think that's huge. Uh, and I think that's something you need to learn. Um, 
So it's kind of more towards S tier, but I think she's A tier. Yeah, like with, with the classification that Mangus put, she is borderline. Can we do it? <clears throat> Can we do it in between? Just put her in between A and S. <laughs> you want to put her in between A and S? <clears throat> yeah, because I mean, Cause it, Chad, here's a Chad problem. Chad is Because you, you need to know how to counter her. And she has the potential to be amazing, right? But right. she isn't a must-have character. No, absolutely that's why, that's not. Why, that's why I'm torn with the S-classification, because it's not like if you ha don't have counters, you lose, right? Like, if that's the classification, she's not S. But needing right. to know how to counter her, she's definitely up there. Those uh, characters that can, ah, like, snowball so fucking quick, she's up there. That's why I'm kind of torn on this defensive offensive classification as to one letter, you know? And uh, chat is saying S tier. Majority of chat saying right. S tier right now. So here's my argument for why I wanted to put her B tier <clears throat> is when she gets going, she will absolutely destroy. If she doesn't get going, she is fucking useless. You're a player down, Loki. She is absolutely fucking useless if she doesn't yeah. get going. Also, she's very dependent on the enemy team's comp. If the enemy team has a lot of stuns, Countess is fucked. Countess right. is 100%. absolutely fucked. It doesn't even matter if she gets ahead mid game. Once you get late game and it's a team fight, as soon as she tries to dive on that on the, on that carry, like she might have been deleting him mid game, she might have been deleting him early game, but late game, all of a sudden there's a bot D and she doesn't kill him right away. And then she gets fucking stunned by Decker. And then she gets knocked up by Belga. And she is just done. She's just fucking right. done skis. So I think there's no. a lot of hard counters to count us, which is why I wouldn't put her at A tier or definitely wouldn't put her at S tier. But I would put her at B tier, but you guys are saying A tier. Um, well, chat is saying S tier. I'm down. I'm still down for the debate on this one specifically. Because yeah, I don't I'd disagree. I don't disagree with you. But again, the only reason why I would rate her so high is because you need to know how to counter her. If not, she'll take the fuck off, right? Right. Like if we're considering that aspect, like one of the was one of those characters you gotta be careful for, I, I'm gonna rate her higher. But if I it's just like a make or break situation, yeah, I wouldn't put her past eight tier at that point. I think it's she's uh she's actually pretty easily to counter as well. Like uh like I, it took me a minute, you know, as a, as a not as good player to to learn that, right? So, but once I learned it, I can I can handle going against a countess, right? I I would I would a hundred percent please put me against a countess all day instead of a clutter, right? So that's where I'm like, uh, what was that? What? <laughs> I was like, word I didn't understand, but that's why I think she's she's a tier because the fact that. She can be very strong, but she's not S tier because she's not just too strong. Yeah, I'll be real. I would I'd probably lower it and put it at A at best at that point. Boop. Because I'm kind, I'm just kind of torn between the tiers. You feel me? And the classification. So I definitely don't think she's a must have or you lose. So I'm let's not put her S. All right, cool. I think that settles it for Countess. Let's move on to Decker. Uh, Decker, I am going to say Decker is definitely A tier, if not S. I, I have her middle, middle of the road for Decker. Okay. I'm going to say, I'll, I'll give her a solid A. I won't explain yet. I got you, Beardy. I got <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm also going to say A tier. She is uh, the the top notch uh support character right now but i don't think any support really is s tier at this moment okay mm, you you bring up a good point now we'll talk about that as we what go. i'll say is decker in a very in, in a good coordinated team her cage is absolutely fantastic people that know how to place that cage well will destroy an enemy team her she mm -hmm. has a long range stun she has a slow, she has a speed boost, she has everything that a support wants and needs. And she Except has healing. Well, she does have healing, but I mean, who does, right? You got FaZe and Narbash. Those are the only two that really have healing. Well, the only reason I bring it up 
it's because after the changes to some items as well, there is definitely a bit of a healing preference going on. Like Narbash kind of made a comeback mm. a little bit as of late, especially when phase came around. Like a lot of people have been using a Narbash to counter a phase because he had like it even proves that he has even stronger healing early right. on. So in a quick engagement, Narbash heals will outlast phase. So I would put her at A because of her range above all. The amount of range, the amount of poke, the amount of harassment that you can apply in lane with a dagger right. is ridiculous. You can you can bully without even having to be in the danger zone. I think right. that alone puts her A tier. I, I I just think her ultimate is just no. Her great. ultimate is very strong and it and it works especially in the team fights. It's 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 a huge team fight, you know, option and you know you can uh, with her ultimate you can be used. Uh, offensively and defensively you know you can use it for an escape you know here you go you guys have you know <laughs> stay here and you're you're gone you know and to protect your adc if need be but you can also use it just to feed your adc you know um you know you're luring the cows to slaughter uh no offense cow 071 um <clears throat> but uh you know so i i agree i think she's a tier i just don't think she there's an i don't think it's strong she's strong enough to put s tier um just because of the ability like she's easily counterable you know when it comes to any team position so i can't put a rest here in my opinion okay yeah i, I think as we said earlier it's going to be very difficult to put anybody s tier based off of the classification that s tier right now for us is you have to have them or you lose that's that's going to be rough because i think strings matters has done a decent job lately that's what I'm making saying. sure that there's no outliers like that. We're gonna have a hard time putting yeah. anybody in S tier or anybody in D tier, but we can't put them all in fucking A tier, guys. Well, I'll be real with you. Tell Strange <laughs> Matters to stop making everybody try to balance yeah. everybody the same. Chat like, every character agree, should have. Yeah, chat like, everybody should have like their differences, right? Like strengths, weaknesses. Right now, we are kind of in a meta that if anybody's falling behind, they just get brought right back up to the rest of the group. Yeah, there there right. aren't that many people. They're sticking out in opposite directions, right? Well, let, let's go to the next one. All right, let's go to Gadget. Um, fuck, I love Gadget. She's my absolute, absolute favorite mid laner. But she doesn't have the burst. I'm gonna put her C tier. See, I was gonna say B for Gadget. Um. I, I'm also going to say B for Gadget. Uh, she has so much range, so much poke. And, and uh, even though they're, I think they nerfed Matt Limiter, it's still, you know, huge on her. Like, um, she's not, you know, good enough to get A tier. and But I think she's better than C tier. So I, I think B tier is where she fits. So both of you say B. I, I say C because she is fucking annoying. And she is, like I said, I love her. God, I love Gadget. She could pull off some crazy shit, but everybody like Belka brings a stun to the game and she still mm -hmm. has burst. Gideon just has crazy fucking burst. Morgesh has crazy fucking burst. Countess have played mid has crazy fucking burst. Everybody has this burst that can just delete a hero. Gadget can't just delete somebody it, unless people just let her get out of hand and she is like fucking three levels ahead of everybody and has has full build before anybody else in that case yeah she she's fucking fucking people up with her mind other than that i i think gadget c tier like she's good in certain situations like if you don't need the cc from bellica if you don't need the burst from gideon then yeah pick gadget um otherwise kind of who cares uh, you know what I'm gonna retract mine and go to C because Gadget is that character that you play her because you want to, not because you should. There's never a situation where you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna use those Gadget slows. Yeah, he's gonna be fucked. No, like you use it because you want to. I don't see anybody that would be like, yeah, Gadget's a counter pick to somebody else. You feel me? Right. Like she's good as a zoning mate, but you, you bring up a great point. There is such a burst damage meta, especially with these super loaded items in Fault. Yeah. You, it, it's kind of asinine to go anything that's not burst. You're, you're kind of setting yourself back unless you 
manage to really, really win the laning phase. But it's, it's I don't know. I, I think I'm going to put her C. I'm going to change my vote. I, I still think she's B. I mean, you guys both go C, and that's fine. And I think, well, I guess it depends what the, the rest of the chat says here. But, like, I still think she's B. Like, I get she's not getting out here just, like, melting kids. But, like, her ability, especially in a team fight, to to do damage and, and slow people down and the poke that she has is... Uh, it's it's great like her zoning like you you're literally trying to dodge as an a as an adc main like you're trying to dodge that damn mind she throws out because it does damage and it you know you have to build and i you own items to uh to counter it so i i still put her up in b tier well it looks like uh most of the chat is saying either c or 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 uh or b Windu and I both say uh, C, so I think we're going to keep Gadget in the C tier. Yep, we'll see if it changes. Yeah, we might swap these around later on. And worth reminding people in live chat, we're establishing the CS is a must pick character or you lose, and D is a if you pick the character, you will lose sort of vibe. All right, so Gideon. Gideon can be played mostly mid lane. I guess he could kind of be played off lane a lot of the uh a lot of the mid laners can be played off lane but gideon i think especially doesn't really do all that well off lane but great mid laner um i'm going to say that gideon is a tier personally uh what do you say Windu? yeah but i i would 100 percent put him a i don't like that a lot of this list is a but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, That's why I'm, I put a bunch of them B. I thought about this <laughs> shit. Yeah, it's no, it's a a tier for sure. Um, definitely a tier. Like he's so strong. That passive he has is insane. I think yeah. that's what puts him a tier. If his passive weren't a factor, or if it were maybe a little bit different, he might just be B tier. But being able to throw that extra rock is just t disgusting, bro. It increases his burst potential tenfold. And it's something you need to learn about. It's something you need to know about. You need to know that yeah. he can possibly hit you with a, 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 a fucking meteor from the sky and then a rock from his hand and then another media, meteor from the sky, just like bam, bam, bam. Yeah, no, you, if you don't know that if he hits you with two rocks, right, either one, one from the sky, one from his hand, if he hits you with both those, he gets a free one instantly. Like if you don't know that then that's that is very detrimental to you being going up against him like it, it's definitely a must know yeah and, I mean, and with his ultimate giving him shielding i've seen that help gideon's out so much so much i think that was such a great decision from strange matter to give him some kind of survivability tied to his ultimate and like it, it's such a better decision than what epic did which was to give him a stun a micro stun on his ultimate Ugh, that yeah i mean sucked. i definitely feel like getting it for the longest time was one of the favorites in mid like one of the favorite mages overall like from the from the development team i don't know if that's true but it always felt like he was treated a little bit more special than the rest of them uh, yeah, yeah. He, he's just too strong. I say A tier all day. But it's not make or break. Like, if if you don't have a Gideon on your team, you're going to lose. Right, so that's right. that's why we're keeping him A. Um, what's chat saying? Let's see what the... Uh... Oh, right now we got B tier, 50%, two votes. And then we got one vote for A, one vote for C. Okay. We'll keep him A tier. Keep him A tier. Interesting. And whoop, come on, move, Greystone. Greystone. Okay. Find the Be layers. <laughs> before okay, Greystone, uh, you can play him in the off lane. I've seen a lot of people play him in the jungle fairly successfully, which I don't understand why that works, but somehow it does. Um I'm gonna put Greystone uh patch 13, I'll I would put him fucking D tier. Um, patch 14, I'm going to put Greystone A tier. Really? Hmm. I, I gotta say B. 
I agree with Windu. I'm going B tier. Um, I feel like this not... man's copying me. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go next the next couple of times. Uh, we'll show that I'm not copying. But like B tier, uh, uh, he's he's not too strong. Uh, I, I agree with with Goose what he's saying. Um, with 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 patch thirteen, uh, I would have had him you know C or D tier. Um, but with that new was it his new passive? Is that what it is that they yes. changed it? Um, that definitely makes him stronger and it, it makes him better in lane. Um, so I, I definitely give him a more generous B tier. Um, but I don't <laughs> think he's strong enough to do uh, to do too much as an A tier. So I put him B tier. Yeah, I went with B just because of what he brings to the table. You feel me? He has ridiculous jungle clear, which is nice by all means, right? He has mm -hmm. good survivability, but take that away from a gravestone. What else does he bring to the table? Right. He, he's he's got the disarm. He he's a fucking ADC killer. I just, he's great. I mean, he's great early game. He's yeah. great mid game. He's great late game. Um, I I really like Greystone now. Like I said before, I would have put him D tier. Anymore, I would I would put him A tier. Uh, you guys disagree, but I really like Greystone now. That um, the new passive, him getting um, you know, with with his hits, he gets a little more health regen. He could just fucking stay in lane for fucking ever, forever. And even if uh, even if he's a he's my he's my favorite pick against a ranged offlaner because you could jump on top of him and cut him down and still get that health regen. You have to pop a a health pot or something to to survive all the minion hits, but. He's the he's about the only good counter to a to a to a ranged off lane unless you're very good with Richter hooks. But I can see that I can see that in solo. And like I said, he has the survivability, so there's that. He's able to kind of just dive in and apply a little bit of pressure and whatnot. But like even the argument of the disarm, like early game for example, you're disarming for what a second. Most carries don't even do one hit per second usually mm -hmm. slower so you got rid of what one basic attack early game at yeah s2 yeah i don't feel the effect on it. i mean i do uh, there's occasionally oh okay i got disarmed but like it, it's not enough to like oh shit i just lost this fight because of that you know i don't feel that effect through it um yeah. have you guys I been playing like, greystone yeah i don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I feel me like, playing I, against him i don't me playing against is what i'm talking about i feel like yeah. his the fact that he's a melee right his movement potential combined with his Q and his basic attack is going to do way more against a carry or against any squishy or whatever argument the disarm would actually come into play than the actual disarm will. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, phase ults the carry, especially a sparrow. You see the phase sparrow combo a lot, and she starts whipping out that ultimate, just blasting through your team. You disarm her, she's done. She's done for a while. I mean, I don't know about done, bro. Like, cause here's the thing: by the time Phase pulls her, the disarm wore off, and she's back into it. The ult lasts way longer than the disarm does. Yeah, it does, but it, it negates quite a bit of that ultimate damage. Well, in the, one but, but in that case, so much of the ultimate damage. So uh, to kind of, you know, provoke thoughts here, isn't wouldn't that fall into the very situational ability? which would probably place him even lower than B at that point, if you were just talking about that ability. Right, but it's not even that ability. He's got a lot of other stuff going for him. Like I said, his passive is amazing. I just, I say, I think Greystone is so much better now. I don't disagree, but there's, whether when it comes to jungle and solo, I still think there's other picks that would bring more to the table. Whether it be okay. on team fights, whether it be just handling their own thing, you know, not including team fights, etc. Okay. So, uh, what has chat been saying? I know both of you said B. I said A. Chat's been all over the place. Uh, I have an chat S tier, I have an A tier. Um, I have a couple B tiers. Uh, I have another A tier. Uh, it literally, chat's been all over the place with this one. Let's put him in the um, middle. Let's put him in the middle. Yeah, I think one of the rougher parts about this in general, too, is a lot of people, including us, are going based off of our own experiences right. with or against that character, right? And the experiences with every single one of these characters will change depending on what bracket of players you're going up against, right. for sure. So that is worth mentioning here. Oh, God. 
All right, Grim.exe. I think Grim is highly, highly underrated. Uh, he can be played as a, a, a he can can be played as an ADC or it can be played as an offlaner. I think the thing with Grim is people need to learn how to use him. I don't know how to fucking use him. I don't ever I don't ever play Grim. But when I see like a good Grim that has practiced with him, he is way fucking scarier than any other ADC I face because he can right. slow you and all this other shit. And I'm breaking my own rules by explaining my fucking my fucking pick already. But I'm gonna put him <laughs> in A tier. That's where I'm going to put Grim. All right. I agree with A tier. I'm going to jump ahead of Windu here so he knows I'm not copying him. Uh, I agree with A tier. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I'll let, I'll, then I'll discuss later. Go ahead. See, even though he's my probably my the one I have the most fun playing, I'm going to go. I, I would put him at a flat B at best. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, because you, you got to think about it. Like. He's fun. His poke is amazing, right? He, I don't think fault is in the state of players and or items to where Grim is a necessity that you have to know how to counter. Because as we just mentioned, barely anybody even knows how to play him properly. I ha like He's the one that I have the most fun playing. But I'll tell you what, I know that nine times out of ten, if I'm going up against a Grim and I'm and any of the other carries... I just go DG support. This is going to be a quick one <laughs> because there's a good chance that they just don't know how to use Grim properly, including stance switching and stuff. He's a very complex character. He I is. would put him B at best because, like we said, he has potential to take off, but he's not an he's not a proper counter pick for anybody. You don't go, oh, they got Sparrow. I'm going to have to go Grim. You know what I mean? Like nobody go. That's nobody's go to as a counter pick. Nobody's go to as a, hey, this is, this is how we win the game. Got to have Grim. He's he's. I think quite I frankly, think he's kind of like gadget, but he's just better. He's more useful, so that's why I put him B. I think I think the reason that they have this situation is me and Goose were talking about this off uh, off air before we started going. Is he is more of a utility uh, character. He's not. He doesn't have that known role as ADC. You know, people use them more in off lane than they do use them as an ADC. Um, and I think that kind of is, is a hindrance to him because people don't understand where he's supposed to go. You know, you play him mid, you play him, you know, solo, you play him ADC, and it makes it harder for people to understand what's going on there. I think his kit and what he has going for him makes him stronger and definitely takes him out of the B tier, puts him in the A tier uh, because of the way he can be played. And, you know, I think... We, we can't base this off of the player base we have now. You know, we, us three, us understanding how this character can be played, not saying that we're good with him, but when understanding how he can be played and the skill that it takes to play him is different. And I think that puts him, that, that alone, this, you know, you put a skill behind him and you learn that character makes him huge and that put that's why i put him in a tier but we have to take into consideration that if the character is much more difficult to learn right like yeah he's gonna have maybe a higher ceiling so to speak but if he's that much more difficult to learn that's going to affect the rating of how much how the character overall performs you feel me like okay so i can give grim to a top 0.001% player and they're going to do fucking amazing with him if they're a Grim main, right? But if the other 99% of Grim players are end up being C tier, D tier because he's a little too complex for the average majority, that's going to affect how I judge a character. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we're not judging the player base. We're judging the character themselves. Right. And if and, that character I, has that potential of being that good, then we that's where we, we got to put them in that situation. Like, that's why... Like, yeah, but uh, the ease of use of a character also comes down to it. Like, we're not making a list of tier lists well, if, if, if only Masters the case, players then, were using it. If that's the case, then Greystone's definitely S tier in that argument. <laughs> I mean, W key and fucking go like that's I mean, Greystone's the easiest character to use in this game. But that's I mean, why I rated him lower than you guys, because he brings only so much to the table. Like he W can go. Yes, I'm taking that factor into consideration. 
But as far as CC, as far as in team fights, etc., can he provide the same as others? Yes. And at, and I bring that same argument here to Grim. Can Grim provide the same in a team fight that a Sparrow with her ultimate can? Or let's say a Murdoch with a cross ultimate snipe, Twin Blast with his ultimate and all, and all the extra shots that he's throwing out. Will a Grim bring the same to the table, whether it be in laning phase or in a team fight? I think Grim can bring more because he can pill for himself. He can pill for others. He's got his shield that will counter him getting pulled out of position by something or getting stunned. Um, or, or more guest halted. I can't play Grim well, but people that can play Grim well, he's fucking amazing. He's fun. He, like I said, he's literally my favorite carry to play if I just want to have fun. Yeah. Legit. But I still wouldn't rate him higher than it be personally. But I can be in the yeah. minority. Chat said A. I said A. Bearded said A. Yeah, I chat's, think... chat's saying S and A. Yeah, that's for sure. He, he's high A. Yep. High A. Grux. Now, Grux is normally play jungle, but he can also be played off lane fairly well. Uh, I think Grux is really good. But again, I'm thinking ahead here, man. <laughs> I'm going to put in B tier because we can't put everybody in A tier. <laughs> and I'll be uh, right yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I, uh, Grux is B tier as well. Um, I want to put him A tier, but I'm going to put him B tier. See, I would rate Grux higher than Greystone. Like, as far as which jungler to pick, which solo laner to pick, I I, I think Grux brings way more to the table. So I I would say higher than Greystone, so I'm going to go A. There's no way I'm going to put a Grux below Greystone. No way. <laughs> what, what did you Grux put him as, Bearded? Is... I put him as B tier as well. Um, I I think he's just easily countered. Uh, I, really? I love playing as him. He he's a great character. He's one of my favorite you know offlaners to go as. But like he he's just so easily countered. The only time I actually do good with him is when we play our uh, hide and seek uh, mode on customs. You know that's that's about it. Other than that, I can't do well with the guy. And I mean I'm not basing it just off of me, but you know just seeing other people play him. Like he can be easily countered in off lane, so. Um. Yeah. He's he fucking sucks off lane. Um. I was kind of kidding about B tier. He's one of the few that I would actually put as S tier for real. Um. Like make or break. Like if you don't have him, you're kind of throwing. I think he's he's one of the best junglers. He brings two forms of CC. He brings CC Im immunity. He brings great mm -hmm. damage. He brings damage over time. Grux has everything you want. He's got everything you want in a jungler. He has fast clear times. He's just fucking awesome. I love Grux. <laughs> I've been I've been playing a lot of Grux lately. Maybe that's feeding into my decision. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love Grux. Um, he's got a dash that can be used as an engage or an escape. He's got a pull that can pull. He's pull, he's got multiple His pull team is the CC. easiest uh, ability to dodge. It is very his easy pull, to dodge, yeah. His pull, why do they have a timer on his pull? Because there's no point. The only time to put the, to go max pull is when you're going against the jungle minions that don't fucking move. Other than that, you can't do max pull. Or lane minions, because you know they're coming to you, so you just time it right. Like, okay, max. Well, right, no, because a good, a good Grux is going to do his pull at a proper moment. Like, you feel me? Like, if you're face-to-face -face with the enemy and you're trying to pull them, they're more than likely going to dodge it. Like a good Grux is going to sit there and be like, step forward, smack. No, even, Instead that, of even going if they're the running pole. away, even they don't see you. Like you literally could be standing there just laning and all of a sudden you just have this orange cone going under you. You know, oh shit, I got to move. Because you see, there's an indicator like, hey, he's getting, there's a Grux behind me getting ready to pull me. I got to move. There's no, you don't do yeah. max time. Like there's, it's way too long of a, of a, uh, of a uh, ability you need to uh, that needs to be sped up for grux in my opinion chat yeah, did, I, I think people agree. just need to get better, better love i think that, people I, including myself just need to get better with that pull because you can reactivate it at any time you don't have to max it out and the pull isn't for damage it's for cc it's for pulling people back in like it is but like you, you, you do, do more damage you do that you cone, max it out. and it's coming out it's coming out 
Maybe it's not max, but you see them starting to bob and weave. That's when you hit it. That's when you release and grab them. Yeah, the, the pole is definitely more utility, so you can just land another basic mm. and land that right click. Because I mean, your basic and your right click I'm are going to stop, right? There's, there is no point of having a max on there. Is I, I know, yeah, that's what I use it for. I don't use it to max it out. That's my point, though, is there's no point of having a min-max and having more damage at max because you that, like, never happens. Like I said, it's only good for minions in any situation. You're not going to get that max benefit out of it. Oh. I just know I would I'm not gonna put a grunts below the graystone. If anything, at I'd put them <laughs> up there with graystone. It's if you two different if we positions, argue. really. It's two different like Grux is definitely below Greystone for off lane, but I think he's way above him for a jungle. See, and then so let me ask then, because when you're talking about for jungle, a lot of people are considering the fact that Greystone's jungle clear is insane and now his passive his sustainability in the jungle is in, is insane as well so the argument could be made even though Greystone doesn't bring as much to the table he can level up faster and everybody knows in fault levels make the difference you're one level we were one or two levels above everybody above the enemy jungler that's a gg no matter what you're building so i did so just, i did you just argue for gray to be above correct no, 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 I'm saying a little bit, yeah. I, I, I want to understand <laughs> what you're considering in jungle. Because I would like, again, I would put Grux at or above the gray zone just purely based off of the CC. Purely based off of what they bring to a team fight. Well, <sighs> chat said B. What, yep. what are you guys saying? Because I'm, I, I'm saying B. I, I still don't feel I, his, his. Yes, he's got CC, but his CC is easily dodged, in my opinion. Okay, how about this one, dude? Let's move Greystone down to B. Would that make you feel better about it? That's going to make chat angry as shit, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> this video dude, is going to piss I just, people off yeah, so bad. I know. It's just, I think the major issue is that too many of these characters, based off of our qualifications, can be considered A. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And off, based off of our qualifications, the S tier is make or break. You either have the character or you lose. No character really fills into that. I think based off of what we've said, considering the balancing that they've done on purpose, like intentional, I think most of these characters are literally going to fall into A unless we just hella nitpick. You get me? Yeah. Right. I, well, I mean, we'll rearrange these after we're done, I think. S tier. Kalari. Uh, S tier. D tier. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Terrible hero. S tier. I hate her, so she gets D tier. She, <laughs> I she hate her gets so that dick. I, I hate her too. I literally hate her, but she's S tier. No, for real though, I think she's I, okay. Like I gotta stop looking at the A tier because I've I've already thought through these a little bit. I think Kalari is B tier because I think she is quite dependent on your team and the enemy team. Like, because a lot of times you want your jungler to be a little tanky. Tank Kalari is a thing, and it's really fucking good. Um, but you don't, if the enemy team has built, again, a lot of CC, then Kalari is going to get shut down pretty hard. So I'm going to say she's B tier. She's, this is so all based off of to current avoid. meta, right? Current meta. All right. I'm going to go with, I, I'll, I'll be real. I, at best, I'm gonna say B. Because That's I like what I, the fuck. Well, because I'm considering <laughs> both, right? Like a good Kalari will tear the shit up out of that lobby. Right? But a good Kalari is also contingent on the fact that the enemy team doesn't know how to ward properly. You, she's, a, ward, she's a pub. A ward stomper. is not gonna stop that all. A ward does not stop that all. She no, no, I, I, on top of you and you're dead. I understand, no, but okay. I'll, Go ahead. The ult can be stopped, though. Like, she can ult to a Richter. He can fucking silence at the right time, and her ult does, doesn't do shit. Decker can stun bomb at the right time. Her ult doesn't do shit. 
you can push as a Murdoch technically as she ults to you at the perfect timing. Yep. If you got the perfect timing, which is hard to pull off, but you can completely negate Kalari's ultimate. I'm saying even if she gets to you, right? Let's say she is able to output the damage. Let's say she does kill the carry, right? Once she's there, if she cannot get away with invisibility, now that's a squishy, nine times out of ten at least, that's going to be a squishy Kalari that's now in the fight. If she can't get away with invisibility, she's gone. No, but, <laughs> if jump, you're, jump, but here's the team. Jump, here's the tap, problem. Tap, most she's gone. No, she's most of pop, the pop. games, most you of the games that I see game. a Kalari go off, the only person running Rad Pulse is the jungler because it's recommended. Pop, pop. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where'd she go? I heard her. Every time I, I see a Kalari at. pop off, people aren't running sentry wards. People aren't running rad poles. The vision system needs a rework regardless. We all know this. But at the end of the day, S tier. In a good, I'm talking about you get good players in there. Kalari's going to struggle. People know how to counter. Yeah. People That's, know how to counter her. She, Kalari's in the same boat as Countess, I think. Mm. Like, if she gets ahead, she's fucking unstoppable S tier. You can't do shit about her. Countess doesn't have invisibility. If That's she gets a, a if she gets a Kalari lit, has invisibility. If Kalari gets just a little bit behind, fucking trash. Like if she can't get a few kills up front, she's she fucking sucks. Well, isn't that what we established for Countess though? Yeah, that's why I said she's right there with Countess, which I put Countess a B tier, but you guys wanted you guys wanted to put her a. Day. Well, I mean, we've discussed a lot <laughs> since then. I'm down for lowering Countess. Change my mind. I hate her too. <laughs> <laughs> I think Countess stays at A, and I think Kalari goes to S because Clary, Countess doesn't have the invisibility. So you think right Countess now, if a, te- if a team has a Kalari and the other team doesn't, the team with the Kalari is winning? I can't stun an invisible person. I can't stun a ghost. I literally have no clue where they're at. I can't stun them. Countess, I know exactly where she's at. I know where she's going to be. Her shadow slip, guess what? There's a little fucking thing that looks just like her. You know she's going right back to that point. I don't know where Kalari's going to be. All you hear is pop, pop, because she jumped twice, and that's it. I have no clue where she's at. Okay, I, but unless unless all five people are running Rad Pulse. Well, hold on. So that's, on that's it. What, I'll be honest with you. If you're going against a Kalari, I, yeah. Quite frankly, you should have two or th- at least two or three people running Rad Pulse. <laughs> yeah. For real, yeah. Especially like as a carry, as soon as there's a Kalari on the other team, Rad Pulse support. You better go fucking ward. I got Rad Pulse shit. <laughs> I got Rad Pulse. You want me to ward? Bet I'll put a sentry on the south. You're welcome. The the S in Kalari's tier stands for shit. This bitch just two shot me in point six <laughs> seconds. Exactly. Yeah, Dude, she, she puts off funny. so much fucking damage. If she gets ahead, if she's allowed yeah, to, there, if she's tell allowed me to another invade hero jungle, that says, tell, give me another hero that anybody says, hey, how do I? How do I defend against this hero? And their their argument is, don't let them get fed. Every hero. Morris. No, no, Morris. that's not true Countess. at all. Boris is the only one. No, Boris <laughs> I can and, name and, and any uh, any character one. that does damage and burst, no. and somebody's no. been like, well, uh, they're so strong. How do I stop that? <laughs> don't let her get fed. What do you mean? How do you stop a Morgus? You no, can't now. You already fed him. Fed. That's the whole point of getting fed. Everybody should be that way. But those are the only two people like, how do I defend against us? You don't let them get fed. Oh, okay, that's it. That's all I that's your only argument of how I defend against this character. Don't let him no. get fed. Well, first that's of all, literally- anybody that says that's the only argument is just wrong. How do you how do I stop this? You don't. Rad you get rid of them. You ban them. You ward. Don't play. <laughs> no, you, get vision, S-tier. or if you're really struggling that much, I mean everybody have- in chat. You're the only two that said this. Everybody Man. in chat saying S tier. You were the only two that argued against it and say that she's not S tier. Everybody's you- saying S tier. Did you do a poll? Uh, they did have a poll, but I'm literally just watching chat. Everybody's saying S tier. Well, sorry, oh, Huddy. Oh. Huddy being the negative guy. No, it's because only... it's because Kalari. Oh my god. See Kalari, like yeah. yeah poll, if... Sorry, empty said poll is eighty percent S tier. Eighty percent. But, but again, for he, here's my problem. Here's my problem. You, we establish S tier is you either make or break it. Uh, uh, we also established that S tier is a must. You either to pick this hero or at least learn them because you le- you need to learn how to face them. Yeah, but I guess like part of that is so you're gonna play is you're the gonna place her in S tier because of the half, the second half. 
yeah, you need to learn how, how do you play against that? You don't know what you're doing. Like you literally, this girl can just kill you in 0.6 seconds. If she's That's way ahead, number, by the way. if she's <laughs> way ahead, she can. Yeah. And it's, a, and I've faced that as a sport where Kalari kills my carry before I can do anything about her. But yep. I've also played jungle where I just fucking snuffed Kalari early and she just didn't do shit for the rest of the game. Like, it's feast or famine with Kalari. She's either S tier or she's fucking D tier, which is why I put her at B tier. Because she's she's kind of in the middle. If you let if you let her fucking do what the fuck she wants, then yeah, she's going to be S tier. But you can shut her down pretty quick. If a character is, and, and we might be, have to relook at this A tier, right? If a character's contingency of whether they're S tier or not is whether they're fed or not, that shouldn't be a reason why they're S tier. Right. Because yeah. everybody can I'm can be in the lead if they're fed. fed or not. I'm talking about the fact that she literally is an oppressive hero. Like anytime I go against a Kalari, I'm like, fuck, here we go again. <laughs> like every time. I literally I said, go watch any of my VODs. And they'll anytime I go against a Kalari, like this is the one hero I want Strange Matters to take out of the game. I can't stand this hero. If, wait, is this yeah. is D trigger still in here? Because if it's D triggers Kalari, then I'll put it at S. D trigger, I've went against D trigger a few times. I've you know, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen Stranger this. in there has killed it. <laughs> uh, gosh, like hey, there's D trigger because he because she changes the way that you play. Like you feel me? Like if you for for example, there's a bear jungle, you're not necessarily going to change how you play duel, right? But because she changes so much. I think a but i'm i again i'm not gonna put her s because it's not make or break this is it's not like hey you have a kalari you insta win i'm not gonna put her s helen keller's kalari is b tier anything higher is s i love it ed thank you all right i'll, I'll put her at a i'll put her at high I'll, I'll put her in the middle i'll put her in the middle between a and s just because of everybody else's thoughts and that's why i brought more people in because i'm not a fucking expert <laughs> I don't know goddamn everything. So, according to the chat, according to Bearded, I'll put her between A and S. She's midway. Somebody, and is that Kai. kinetic just said in chat? No characters in to win, though, and that's like, exactly. That's why, like, S tier is, like, not filled with anybody. Okay, Kai. Kai Mera. At one point in time, I would put, I would have put him at D tier, like, fucking straight up. Now I'm going to put him in between A and S. Kai is really good right now. Kai is really good. Um, I don't know if I put him A and S. I, I did want to put him A tier. That uh, uh, The new items that we got, they, they really help him out a lot. Um, and his uh, uh, the the stacking, his stacks uh, are just really strong. And it's so hard to to battle up against a good, Qua a good Chimera. So, uh, yeah, I, I put him A tier. I don't think Kai is better than Grux or John or uh, Grayson. I, I would put him right there and be with them, or even a tad bit lower because I I, I really do believe a Grayson or a Grux provide more value than a Chimera. Chimera is just easy mode because you get to farm, right? Mm -hmm. Like they essentially give us a different version of an easy mode jungler with a Grayson rework, but. As yeah. far as like what he can actually provide besides W keying, I'm not I'm not rating him any higher than a B. He's lucky he's getting a B for me. <laughs> My only reason for putting Kai so high is because of uh, the Demon Soul Sword. Is that what it's called? Demon Sword. Mm -hmm. That shit makes him fucking insane. But yeah, but it may Kai, Kai but, gets shut down easy by, by CC, so he is pretty situational. Like, if the, again, if the enemy team has a lot of CC, he kind of gets shut down. But yeah, I, I don't know. I say at best, B. Um, you know, since he doesn't really have much CC, he's got what? What is that? The Q that kind of like stops people going from there, like kind of pushes people. Yeah, back his and ambush slows and his R silences, which his R is very powerful, which people don't seem to understand. But 
Yeah, I, I'll uh, I'll concede and and, and I'll agree with you guys at B tier. Um, because I can't his stacks can't be the only well, reason that he's not agreeing with me. But well, <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm not. So yeah. Yeah, I just I'm not gonna rate him higher than a Grayson because I right now I think Grayson is just a better Chimera. Okay. Personally. Okay. All right, we'll put we'll put Kai at B tier. Next up, we yeah, got you know, you know what kind of messes with me with this list too. Just kind of throwing it out there before we go to the next one. I kind of wish that the characters would have been like, let's go through the mages and then let's go through the carries, because I feel like we're just going back and be like, hey, can we can we move that guy yeah. from B to, yeah, to I, C? I, I, I think we're gonna re- <laughs> rearrange this list at the end, but uh, yeah, I just did an alphabetical order to be as fair as gotcha. possible. <laughs> now we got Kong. Uh, Quan can be can be played in the jungle, can be played in the off lane. I think he is very underrated. I think people just don't know how to play Quan. Um, he's very hard to play. I mean, I'm, he is I'm very really hard to play. Him. I think he's a tier, maybe even close to S tier. He's he's very very fucking good, but people just don't play him, and I don't understand why I don't play him because I'm not I suck at him. But whatever. Quang's not getting higher than a C for me. A C from Windu. What do you got, bearded? Quang? Um, there was a time that Quang was definitely between A and B for sure. Um, he was well, he's pretty much S tier back in the day. Um, I look at the people on the board. Who 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 is he better than? I got a piss for going on one on one. Um, like that's kind of where I'm going now that we have right. some sort of baselines. You feel me, right? Quang, I I think Quang can definitely with his his abilities and what he's got going for him and his CC. I think he'd definitely be better than uh, a Chimera and even a Greystone. I think he can be better than. I think he's more equal. Uh, I think now with everything what's going on with Greystone, I think he's more on even level. So I, I'll go B tier with Quang. Okay, interesting. As I actually, somebody in chat just uh, mentioned this. Uh, Yugni, I think you pronounce that? They're mentioning that Quang's probably B if you build damage, C if you build tank. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, he's not much of a tank. You have to go damage with him. Uh, tank, uh, Quang, because you, you got to get, get that energy damage out there. He can survive and all back to lane. What do you do? I at, at best, I'll concede like somewhere in between B and C, but I, I just don't think that as far as scaling goes, as far as putting items on him, and he's just amazing, right? Right. I don't necessarily see him beating a Grux, Greystone, or Chimera, whether it be in a one v one on solo or whether it be jungling. Like I see Quang, and it's like yo that Quang's going to have a rough time. He's either going to be amazing or he's going to be trash. You feel me? Like I, <laughs> that's hit and miss. And it's not even because of the character because the right. character's abilities, I feel like they just fall short because he's been kind of borderline neglected. Like all this attention has been towards these other characters getting constantly reworked. When's the last time you even read about a Quang adjustment? Uh, I don't know. I, I believe I don't pay that much attention to the guy because I'm really bad at him. So uh, I, I literally just started playing. I on stream last night. I played him uh, against AI matches, or AI uh, bots or whatever because I was trying to understand. Because that's why I want to put him in B tier because I'll go up against a Quang, and I I don't understand how they're surviving. Like where's the life steal coming in with this? You know, like what's going on? Like I'm literally trying to understand what they're doing. Because I don't get it. So I was playing him last night, and uh, thanks to the help with uh, Sock and Bren Bren, uh, a little more understandable uh, with what's going on. I, I got pretty decent with him against AI. But uh, I mean, he's fun. Um, he's, Quang is definitely fun. And well, now that you learn to play him, yeah, like he's not bad. But um, I think the, the survivability, like his lifesteal that he's got, you know, that little passive that he gets, that he gets lifesteal, and, and the fact that he does a lot of energy damage, which brings versatility into the solo lane i think that's why i kind of want to keep him up at b tier but uh chat has voted and voted c tier as well so really they put quang at c tier they did him okay voiceover lamau 
He said, Quang. <laughs> Quang. Yeah, I'd, oh, I'd no, probably I think, put him, uh, I think put, Quang is I'd probably put him like high C. You're not wrong. Like, I, like again, he could put him at juice take off, but, but I, I really do think behind the other ones, he's just kind of falling short. Okay. Lieutenant Busty Bellica. Um, she's one of the few that I'm going to put at S tier. Really? Really? Go ahead. I, I feel like you're joking this time now. Like, nope. Like you weren't joking. Like you put, like you were joking with uh, Grux or whatever. Um, what do you got? I, I'm thinking. Go ahead and say what you got. I, I, I got to think about her. She's a tough one. I probably put her like low A. You know what I'm saying? Even that a lot of thought. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try to think. She's got like great wave clear, and uh, she does great mm -hmm. burst damage. Um, she's definitely A tier. I just don't know if I want to do like S A or A or like or just A. <laughs> she's SA. she's strong. Um, I'll go A. I'm going A tier with her. She's she's a strong. She's got some good abilities, but like it, I think. Uh, if her knockup wasn't so easy to uh, avoid, I guess uh, the word I'm looking for, I think that kind of makes her kind of almost not useless, but just kind of takes a lot from her if she's not able to get that that knockup bomb combo. You know that does a lot for her. Okay. Well, I think it's just important to remember, like, the versatility that she provides, right? Exactly. Like, the reason why Gideon's an A is not because he has that burst of damage. But, like, hey, you're in a Gideon ultimate. You're now slowed in there. You get hit by a rock. You're kind of slowed. You feel me? It's right. not like... It's not like, you know, for example, Gadget, that it's kind of just very one-dimensional. She right. has the knockup. She's got her ultimate that increases damage based off missing mana. So she has that burst in there as well as her bomb, right? And then she has her drone. Dude, her in the middle of a team fight, her drone can get some decent hits in on the entire enemy team without them realizing it. Nobody especially respects in, it. Yeah, especially with a drone that you can't just sit there and smack away. You got to wait for the timer. That drone will put in some fucking work in a team fight. I think the the drone though is just more of I mean it does do I'm not saying it doesn't do damage but I think the drone is more like that like we talked about Boris and the sniff like you just kind of like once you see like hey step back you just wait a minute and then you don't you go into the team fight or whatever like you don't yeah but a good Bellica isn't going to put the drone before a team fight as soon as the fight well, initiates we can't, then they'll we can't place base this I mean if we're going to base this off of a good Bellica then we've got to put Grim we got to put Kalari in S tier then because a good Kalari is going to you know, do whatever you know, all those that we can't uh, just base everything off a good Bellica. So, not so, okay, so let's so let's that. meet in the middle. Let's meet in the middle. The average Bellica will probably play that drone better than the average Grim, for example. We'll we'll use his yeah, that's true. So I like we can't place a Bellica under a Grim, no offense. Her E is kind of fucking useless. Like, it's nice in some fights. But, it, I mean, it's kind of fucking useless. The only, the only good use for e. it is to trick people into think thinking that it's still that it still uh, drains mana. like, And then they back oh. away from it. Yeah, Dude, that's what I'm saying. Bre like, okay, Brenner so. brought up a great point in the chat. It's amazing for popping those bubbles. Like, on, the, on those items that are out there, that now, because now that we have two of them out there, even as far as utility, getting rid of those bubbles... And then yeah, but it doing doesn't. It. it doesn't just get rid of the bubble. They have to use an ability, don't they? Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like they use right. an ability, and they they pot, they get rid of the bubble. Now you go in for your full burst damage. Right. Okay. I'm just saying it, it's. It, it. I don't know. Maybe but, I'm just the one that I see a fucking Bellica uh, drone circle on the ground. I'm just like, all right, I don't use my fucking. Uh, I don't use my abilities. I'm just sitting there as an ADC, just using my fucking basic attacks. So I was like, because that's my strength, anyways. But like, yeah, exactly. I, you're not I see it. I, I say I avoid it. I'm like, all right, 
I got, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy to avoid. You just don't use an ability at that time now. And now it's different if you're, you know, if you're an ability based. I was hero. about to say that's easy to say that as a carry mate. It, it right, it is. I the rest of the I, lobby I sees that that drone and they're like, "Fuck, do I take that little bit of extra damage and continue to fight? Do I back out, disengage, and then continue the fight?" It's I've, easy to say that as a carry because we just hold left click and keep going. I've also never really seen her drone do that much damage to me when it has done damage. I've not seen it like, oh my gosh, look, look. I better not do that again. I've never felt that way with her drone. Yeah, but here's the thing about her drone. You don't need her drone. Bellica can be played support. She could play, be played mid lane. She could be played off lane. I've seen Belka played carry with Mage's crossbow. She's, she's very flexible. She has burst damage. She brings CC to the party, which can never be underestimated. And she's just fucking amazing. Like... I think Bellica is like the absolute top tier best mid laner right now. Hmm. I don't know about that. I, I feel like I disagree. I, I feel like I mean she's great. I she's she's like I have probably have my as the mid laner, I have the most uh, games with her, but I was because I was when I first started playing, I was taking her in solo lane. Um and but I don't know. Uh yeah, I, I agree with chat. I think Gid is better than Bellica. Gid's passive just makes really? him too strong. Yeah, Gid's passive is just, it makes him too strong. Like eh, that's it's insane, and it's it's so much easier to hit Gid's rocks than it is to hit Bellica's one knockup. It's not that hard like, to hit her knockup. It, I think it is important you, it goes to mention walls. also. It is so easy to it does go through walls, but it's so easy to dodge. I think well, it is important to mention, though, be. Gideon Gideon has the mobility when Bellica doesn't. That is also worth pointing True. out there when you're comparing True. the two. Yeah, you have to buy the blink for Bellica. Um, I I just I I don't I, I her like I said you. She's, in my opinion, in the tier of the game that I play, Bellica is dependent on the knockup bomb combo that she has. If she misses that, she, then she's not she's not doing too much damage, unless you're unless you are low on mana, then her ultimate can get you there. But if but you're this, if you're not the same low argument on mana, can be made for Gideon, huh? If, if the same argument could be made for Gideon or any of the casters, it's, if I'm they miss their abilities, they're they're screwed. You know? No, that's like she's not like you're not missing. You she needs the knockup to be able to land that the other her bomb in a sense, absolutely right? Not. To be able, no, not. You know how many times you you like they, we've all gotten hit by a bomb that chunked you, even though the knockup didn't happen, and then three to four seconds later, here comes another fucking bomb and oh, it, she killed me I'm anyway. I'm saying it's bitch. impossible, but I'm saying that's it's more like that's the that is the go to for for all Bellicas. It is so easy to to it's easy not so easy it's easier to hit a Gideon rock than it is to. Okay hit a tele like a telepath fucking here you go i'm gonna i'm literally gonna you know it's coming every time you know a knockup's coming and you only have to stray left to right walking up to you with her hand up in the air yeah it, um, it is so easy to, to avoid it just the, the motion itself even if even if she has an insta cast she in, she's got to pull her arm up and she's got to slam it down yeah but like that's not Gideon's not even pulling this. up like holding it up the whole time yeah, and and empty said that the the chat said a tier i yeah. Uh, yeah i i would agree with a tier i would just definitely say i wouldn't necessarily place her above the gideon but pretty comparable okay i still i still rather have a good gideon than a good bellica on my team i think she's higher but we'll keep her name let's move on to more gesh often played in off lane sometimes yeah. played in mid lane um, pretty powerful hero if she gets ahead. Um, I think Mori is a pretty solid A tier, personally. I, this is yeah, she's, she's definitely an A tier. It's definitely, it sucks. I get it. I literally get it. Yeah, that's fucking how hate balanced her. this game is. It, it, it's, I think she's A tier. I literally, she's a very strong character. Like, and you know her fucking um 
that little her mark and then that swarm that she's got and then it's just instant like you're just dead because how much she uh she can burst you down with her abilities and then her ultimate just is instant kill i'm gonna go b because even though she's easy mode mage right and she has crazy damage output there's no real utility out of her case she's She's low key like a ma another mage assassin in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at least Countess is gonna stun somebody in the middle of her ult. You know right. what I mean? We should give at least Robin. Countess has that slipperiness of teleporting back and forth and everything. Like my homegirl's over there is like, oh, a sticky situation. She's that, Let me just. She, she's got that uh, uh, immunability or whatever that you can run through, and you, the the CC doesn't affect her at that time. That's, that's still not better than a, a Gideon teleport. I'm just talking about Gideon. I'm not talking about Gideon like, teleport. Uh, yeah, but, but I'm, I'm, about... she's a mage. I'm comparing her to other mages. Like, I'm not, especially I'm talking, about the countess, I'm talking about the countess slip. I'm saying that it's like it's very similar to that. Yeah, she's she's an easy mode hero. So maybe like between B and A, but I just as far I'm, as what I'm she brings to the table. Sorry. Yeah, it's the slows that don't affect her, but like um the cc effects are hard, hard cc hard cc will affect her but soft cc i don't think does oh so. then, then then hard well beat. i'm gonna put her a b tier because most of the chat is saying b uh most of you guys are saying b i said a but i could definitely swing towards b with more gash um a little in fact she was the very first honest hero review i fucking that's what spawned all of them was how bullshit she I, was i believe it when and she, she was fucking still is. To the paragon she, it's just too easy to do that much more damage with, with her is the is the problem that's why she might be rated so highly by some people because she literally is auto lock on for half the time right yeah but Very as far player. as but as far as what she brings to the team yeah i still rather have a gideon teleport that the team can go through or a gideon ultimate instead of a Mori ult. Or a Belica knockoff, yeah. Ugh, Murdoch. Fucking Murdoch. I know you guys are gonna be crazy about Murdoch, but uh, <laughs> dude, Murdoch, I think is fucking C tier right now. He is like the worst of the fucking ADCs right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be real with you, I love Murdoch. I'm gonna put him at B. Unless we're talking jungle. <laughs> jungle, Mur <laughs> jungle Murdoch is jungle Murdoch, fucking yikes. way up here. <laughs> yeah. um, I can't. Jungle Murdoch is insane. What the? F why is that? Let me see. It. I don't Let's know. Like, it's the cross cross map ult is definitely still extremely valuable, right? Right. But I, considering the way that the meta is right now and everything, I I wouldn't play some higher than a than it be personally. I'll explain why in a second after Bearded says. Uh, I'm biased, uh, but I'm still not going to put him there. I, I I say he's a high B just because of he is he's strong. He he is the uh, we, we've all voted, right? So yeah, um, he's the uh, he's got the highest uh, health point as, a, as an ADC. He's got the highest shield or armor as an ADC. Um, mm -hmm and uh his his uh, his buckshot ability of the armor shred and that his ultimate being you know global i think he is is a high b tier i, I think empty nailed it by the way before you before you go into a window mm. so i i was just gonna say the only reason i would put murdoch at b is because in order to do a good amount of damage in a team fight you have to walk in way closer than any other carry. Yeah, yeah. No, you definitely. Which is, dang out which there. is dangerous in a game of that melees run way faster than you. So yeah. I walked up to land the shotgun. Now I can't back up in time. You feel me? So it, you, it's right. really it. It is hella full commit on that. But again, his ultimate in the middle of a team fight. <laughs> I hope to God you're not taking a knee in the middle of a team fight. You know what I mean? Oh, like his, his I've ultimate. I've shot. I've shot the bear's <laughs> dick off point blank. I got a clip. I'll show you later. Like his ultimate is amazing cross map, right? Providing just a little bit of damage cross map or stealing kills or whatnot. But 
just purely based off of the positioning that you have to do as a Murdoch to land his Q, I think that lands him at a disadvantage compared to the other characters. I mean, it does land him at a disadvantage, but the fact that he's able, he's the only ADC that can feed all over the map with that ultimate is is huge. And you want your ADC to be fed. So you're able to, like, not only is your support, you got to support Richter pulling, you know, here you go, feed, eat off of this. You also got your, you know, off lane, you know, Quang that's getting, you know, feeding you over there as well. And you got your mid lane Gideon feeding you in mid lane, like just loading you up, you know, and it's huge. I think that that's, you know, enough to put them, you know, high B tier. I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of Murdoch in comparison to the other ADCs right now. Uh, he doesn't benefit well from Rogue, not nearly as much as the other ADCs. He doesn't benefit as well as the other ADCs from a phase support. Um, so if we're just talking ADCs, he's fucking low. He's fucking low as an ADC. But, but, he's a pretty goddamn good offlaner and a really good juggler. Like, he just comes out of fucking nowhere with a fucking amazing amount of damage and he fucking throws down his trap and knocks people into it. it he's kind of crazy as a juggler, which I... God, I don't understand it, but it, it, it fucking works. It fucking works. It's a wee woos brand, but it, chat is bringing up a great point. If you do basic attack, do your Q to shotgun, and then do another basic attack, it will proc rogue because you're yeah. auto canceling. Yeah, that's true. So I mean, it it works, but yeah, I, th I think it just really comes down to, like for me, still, it's just the positioning as far as. Can the other carries yeah. proc rogue, for example, at a safer That's distance? That's what I was about to say. Like, he has the run in to proc rogue, whereas Twin Blast can fucking proc it from forever away. Right. I hate to say it. Probably my most played carry, but I, I'm i still sticking. No, I mean, I, like, maybe I, high B. I will tell best. you, he's below. He's not the highest tier ADC. I just still think he's in between a and b i think he's right there where where goose put him i think that's where he's at i do think the other adcs are very close to it russ thank you so much for that raid brother how we doing how was your games yeah <laughs> so that's Whatever, where we put murdoch all right muriel i think another highly underrated hero i'm going to put muriel a well-played mural at A tier, which I don't know if we want to consider that or not, but whatever, I'm putting it at A, at a tier to start out with. Muriel Strong, I, I agree. I think she's A tier as well. Those shields are amazing. But currently, compared to Narbash, compared to FaZe, you get know what I'm saying? Compared, I mean, Richter is hit and miss. We'll, we'll get to that one. Um... No, you literally missed the, the pull. I can't with you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably... I'd probably put, put Muriel like that A slash B where Murdoch's at. Because I still would rather have a Decker over a Muriel, personally. Yeah, I can see that. That's a good... Uh, I mean, she's, she's strong. She, those shields are very strong. Um, and she's got the speed. Um and she's got the the root um i i that's why i i think she's uh, a, a or or i mean i'm okay with dropping her next to murak there but like she's very close i can get behind still, that i was gonna say you still feel like a goose i can get behind that i i, I think it, when she's played well she has so much effect like she has the global presence and those shields do way more than they should like holy fuck they can save some people she like can do a, good damage. a really well played muriel is fucking amazing you just don't see a lot of them you just don't see a lot yeah. of them but and that all that all she has uh, she's able to to save teammates across maps she's not only is the support for the adc she can support the whole team you know and that's that's huge as well mm -hmm. i think we'll keep her between a and b here i think that's good I agree. I don't think that's a bad spot for her. Big Daddy Bash. 
Um, used to be fucking S tier, but bro, he went the, from S tier to D tier. Some of the nerfs they've given him. Um, yeah, they've they've nerfed his, him hard. Yeah, like I, I I would say B tier for Narbash. Mundo, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I, I'll keep I'll keep him at B. I'll tell you why in a second. Muriel got voted for D tier out of the people who actually voted. That's crazy. No shit, really. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm going to go against Chad on this one. I'm going to keep her. Up <laughs> yeah, high. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm going against Chad as well. Um, Narbash, um, with the slight changes that just happened, I I think he's B tier. Yeah, I would say B tier. Uh, I would say more B C, like closer to C, but like still B. Damn. Um, I, yeah, he's <laughs> just he. It's it's a tough. I don't know. It's tough to have him in there. His because it's still that the the nerf that he got to the cooldown on his heels is, is just it, it's strong. That's a it's a huge nerf that he had. Mm. Well, like like I've said always with Norbash, his his heel is his least effective ability. Like everything else is more effective than right. His heel. But I mean that that heel was I mean that heel and that Scrystone co- combination was was the reason he got the nerf to the heel. You know that that he was able to grow as a, a support. So that proc was huge. But now he's not like that proc. You're not able to proc it like that. So it really just kind of makes it where you can't. You're not getting the gold income that you need to be getting. Can we could we at least move him up a little bit? Like at the top of me, just a little bit. Because here's my issue with him. Like, I still love Narbash. His kit's amazing, right? His kit provides a lot of utility. My biggest issue with Narbash is the nerfs that he's gotten compared to right there. His size, you feel me? Like, Narbash is the only like oddball support that you might want to throw in there, unless you're running a range carry. But a range carry is so fucking strong, especially when you have. Decker with those nukes of bombs that she throws. You got a Muriel that can stack her basic attacks and land roots and stuff. And then you got a Narbash that is just the thunk. And if that thunk is missing, you better hope movement speed and, and the and the heels make the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like it's I like him a ton. Yeah. So but I, I still I still rather have a Decker than a Narbash. Yep. I think he's really good right now because Narbash is uh, I mean, because phase is so much She's picked so much right now, and he's such a great counter to phase. Such a great counter to phase. That's a great point because phase doesn't inherently have too much to stop him except just taking the link off and like putting it on the Narbash to stun him. That's yeah. why he's such a great counter. But it's if it's if anybody else besides phase, I still rather have one of the other ones, quite frankly. Why, why is why do you guys say Narbash is a counter to phase? Like what what is, makes him the counter to phase? Uh, okay, I don't know if this was intended or not, but she can strafe just as fast as just normal whenever she's channeling her E, which makes her very hard to hit with any kind of slow moving stun. Like uh, Decker's ball isn't that slow moving. Fucking Richter's pull is extremely slow. It's very hard to hit phase whenever she's channeling that E because she just strafes like a motherfucker. I don't think that's intended. I think she's supposed to be slowed while she's slafing, strafing just like moving normally. But Narbash is thunk very fast. You can just boom. She's done with that strafe. She's usually out of position if she's being very aggressive and your carry could follow up. I mean, can't Decker do the same thing though? Yeah. Well, I, like like I just said, her stun ball is a little slower than a thunk. I will say though, the likeliness of a Narbash getting bullied out of lane compared to a Decker getting bullied out of lane is substantial in my opinion. Like, especially if you're going bangle Narbash, you know what I mean? Right. Like your bangle Narbash, every time you go and get a last hit on a minion. You're gonna get chunks, so then you have to heal. Yeah, you're putting yourself then, out there. It's the same thing. But then as when the fight starts, you. you're out of mana. Like yeah. it's it's good. Like I still love Narbash. Like yo, throw a Narbash support, bet we'll have a blast. But so I that, just don't know if I'd pick him. If if I'm support, I'm not picking Narbash unless so we're just ch- chilling. If you're Narbash and you go Bangle, is that Narbangle? <laughs> yeah, Narbangle. I hate him. 
I hit him. All right. Uh, so Chad has kind of split on this quite a bit. Yeah, Chad had five votes for A tier and four votes for C tier. So I think in the we, poll that we had, just from our discussion and chat, we'll drop him down to actual B instead of high B. Mid B, mid B, mid B. He's yeah. mid B. All right, phase a fucking hater, a fucking hater. <laughs> always have, always will. Uh, um, she's aggressive. If she, if you play her aggressive, I'm she's her, so strong in lane. I'm putting her B tier. Uh, Mundu, what do you say? What tier? Man, I'm gonna be real with you. I, I, I hate it. Like, I, I, I gotta. I would say, A B. I would say AB. Okay. Mm. I almost want to say she's A tier just because she's so new and it's we still have to learn how to counter her uh, and, See, and what's going on with that. If she still did as much fucking damage as she did before, she right, borderline yeah. would have been S. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, she was. She was pretty strong but, <laughs> for her nerfs. Uh, she definitely did get really strong, um, but I still think she has, you know, the her ability, her kit is is really strong, and I think that's where she falls into A tier because, you know, you have the ability, you're giving them the health regen, you're giving them the mana regen, you're able to pull them into a fight, uh, you know, for being aggressive. You have the ability to pull them out of a fight to save them. Um, you uh, that blind that blind being blinded in this game right now oh, sucks, it, sucks. <laughs> it it literally it even it doesn't i mean for whatever reason i mean it, it, anytime you get blinded, it doesn't matter if it's a team fight or if it's just like a, a, a duo lane fight that blind just it, it makes it hard for you to land those shots and as an adc you need to land those shots that it's crazy so I just I think she's strong. I think she has the ability of being A tier. That's why I want to put her there. Hmm. See, Mr. Uh, Bucrestic for the follow. I think she's extremely easy to learn to play against. You just fucking kill her before you kill the ADC. It's, it, it, it's usually that easy. And like, if you don't want to get blinded, just fucking stay away from her. Like it's not so, that hard. If your if your support goes in and stuns her. Fucking light her up. So let's compare her to our highest rated support, right? Decker has a slow. Does she have a slow? Yes. Yeah, the beam. Yeah. Decker has a stun. Does she have a stun? Yes. 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 Decker has a cage. She has an enhancement ability, right? Right. So I guess you could say those two kind of counter themselves out in different ways. But she right? doesn't have a speed boost. Decker has a speed boost. She could throw you forward. Yeah, that's true. She she can pull you, so there is some sort of movement in there. But then on top of that, she also heals you while she's linked to you while casting all those abilities. Yeah, that's and true. a blind. So theoretically, I mean, yeah, she she can be countered, target her first. I I get that. But as far as what their kit brings to the table, she's kind of loaded up, quite frankly. Yeah. And uh, Chad even said that she does have a speed boost with her R. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think of that. So uh, I just think she's she's strong. And like, yeah, that's I that is how you counter her if you go for her first. But her her beam, her beam that does the slow. Um, it does. Is that the one that is a stun too? After she lands it for so long or whatever? Or how's that one? Which one's the stun? The stun is her the link. link. The link, okay, that's the link. All right, but yeah, so the mm -hmm. the slow on that beam though, it's what two thousand units, which is more than an uh, ADC basic attack range. So like literally, she can just be sitting there poking you nonstop, and you like you have to get your your support has to get in there and stop her, so then you can get in there and do some damage to her. But then you're putting yourself back into position again. For her to link you because then she's now you're in link range the only reason i would rate her as high as you guys are rating her right now is because her mana consumption definitely is not where it should be like she can cast abilities all day and still have plenty of mana 
But as far as poking with an ability, <laughs> that Decker stun when says when that shit hits you, yeah. bro, that's like thunk, quarter of your health. You don't you don't necessarily get a quarter oh, yeah, of your no, health she, unless yeah, she, she phase is going out. full damage. You feel me? Right. No, I'm not saying she's a, I she's not above deck. Right. I'm I'm not I agree with that. If anything, I would like slightly bring Decker up a little bit towards S tier, but not put her in S tier and, and keep phase at A. Or I guess slightly bring phase slightly down, but I'd still put phase above Muriel. Hmm. Okay. I'm I mean I'm I completely disagree with Bearded on this one. Um what what's chat saying? Cause I think Windu's along along my lines. She's she's fucking straight B. But I don't know what chat says. Yeah, I said I said to put it right in between because like I understand all the versatility that she provides, but it's she's not that fucking good after the nerf. No. Like um, I'm like, not seeing the pool empty. <laughs> it ended. I know, but like what did you, what was the result? Did you see the pool? It was S to B. So the, really? it was all over the place. B yep. first place, C second, Meek said. But empty said it was S to B. I'm, I'm confused now. We're all over the place. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I think, I don't know. I just think she's strong, but it's me. Yeah, uh, I think we'll keep her at B. According to uh, everything that we've been seeing. Richter, my personal favorite. Um, your, your baby boy there. If he, j support, support wise, fucking down here. <laughs> like, like, not even on the fucking, not even on the fucking chart. He fucking sucks as support. However, off lane, really good. Jungle, pretty goddamn good. Um, I, it's easy to learn how to play against him. Uh, I love fucking Richter. I fucking love Richter, but I'm going to put him in B. I'm going to put him in B. Richter is... Uh, I want to put him between that B and C tier. Um, really? Uh, yep. No shit. Well, it's because yep, you don't play off lane. No, 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 no. The B. B as in boy, C. Uh, in between B oh, and okay, C. My bad, my bad. Yeah, no, not, no, not D tier. No, he's not that bad. Um... No, and I think the reason I want to keep him in B tier is because of the off lane, um, and and be his the and because of the ability of that. If he does land that hook, it is almost guaranteed kill for the ADC duo lane, right? But he's all like, it's the fact that that hook is almost is very easy to dodge, um, and, and he's limited with the rest of his abilities because the rest of his abilities are pretty much close up you know things to be done like you have to be in that area so i definitely put him in, in between that b and c what do you think Windu? big boy rick <laughs> let me let me clarify here is this under the assumptions that his hooks are working as should be <laughs> oh my god right? yeah that could that should be taken like i have to ask <laughs> I'm going off as he is in game right now. As is right now. Of. How as many right now. fucking That's what we've been times? Doing the rest of people. I've had that fucking dot right on him, and then the hook goes like way over here. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> as he is right now. I I'd probably say keep him there between B and C. Quite frankly, really. I, and I love Rick. I literally just got him. Uh, what was it? To gold the other day, just just because of Yolo. Boy, I I love me some Rick. But he, if we're talking about currently the way he is now, if all of his pokes, or if all of his polls registered as they should, I would I, I would have registered higher. But I I till this day I still have ultimates where I'm like, blam! Everybody's caught in it, and here goes the carry walking through <laughs> while the word stun is on him. I'm like, get me the fuck <laughs> out, bro! How the fuck the word stun is on him, and he's like, I don't know what's happening. I'm just gonna keep walking. Like, yeah, I'm. Mm -mm. 
I, I think Richter is by far the best melee offlaner. But you put him against, like, some of the fucking ranged offlanes, like Doc or Grim or fucking Mori. It's so hard. Unless you can hit those hooks, like, every single fucking time, which you're not going to do. He, he just kind of gets shit on. But if, if he's against, like... Kwong or Gray or fucking Grux or a lot of people are running Chimera off lane now, whatever. Like, he, he's going to fucking dominate him. But you just don't see that happening now. You see everybody leaning towards that that uh, that ranged off lane because people just quit and fault so easy. There's a, there's a so heavy, you, heavy damage meta. You think he's better off lane melee than... Greystone after the passive change? Goddamn right he is, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I, I I still, I've been saying it ever since they, they nerfed it. Uh, they need to speed up his hook. Uh, his hook is too slow. It's too easy to dodge. Um, I'm not saying it needs to be impossible to dodge, but it, it needs, you know, it literally is like, it, you know, it's the, the Matrix, you know, bullets move faster. So, um, it needs to be sped up a little bit. Yeah, for a big boy, his animations are really slow, considering that Steel leaps into the air in a moment's notice without any indicator. Which, we'll get to that guy later. But, yeah, <laughs> currently, yeah, I'm not placing him higher than, like, B slash C because of the bugs in the game. Yeah, if it wasn't for the bugs, I'd put him way higher. But yeah, those bugs hurt so bad. Plus, a lot of times when you activate his E, his fucking shock therapy, or it's not shock therapy, whatever the fuck is <laughs> that shit's it's called. Sounds- he he just you can't basic attack for like three or four seconds afterwards. I mean, his his kit I think is decent. Like I'm like I'm saying, if he were bug free. And you'd be able to land everything consistently. And, you know, like they actually put in some work to keep put him up to par with some people. Then, yeah, I, I would definitely rate him higher. But the way that he sits right now, as much as I love playing Richter, as much as I troll around with Richter, <laughs> if, we're, if it's a try hard match, I, I'm not going to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I might not want to pick Richter. I'm going to be real with you. Like, nah, I got gotcha, you. It's I just gotcha. too inconsistent. I just love him so much. I can't fucking. I can't bring. But I'll, said, leave, I'll leave him there between B and C tier. But man, I love Richter so much. That's, all right, Severog. I think okay. I'm gonna put Severog at B tier, which I know people are gonna disagree. Uh, I'll explain later. Go ahead, Windu. What do you, what do you put him at? This is a rough one, man. It's like, what are we basing these off of 30 minute well. matches? <laughs> I'm going B tier as well while he's waiting. No, I like actually like top tier lobby. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to say C. Okay. Really? Really? Like, okay. Like, I know, and I'll explain my point. Like, you, uh, Sev late game or Sev full sex? Yeah, yo forced to be fucking messed with right but that's also like saying any of these characters fully fed are forced to be messed with the fact that in the first 30 minutes i can watch anybody b or above destroy a lobby while sev is like i mean i'm dangerous but i'm not full stacks yet maybe like hold on like i'm almost there like it that's what i'm saying like if, if this is like plus 30 minutes yeah, Sev is nasty. Sev is nasty. If it's the average 15 to 25 minute match that you see out there, it's it's rough to play Sev. Right. Especially when you have point. like Greystone and everything, you know? Chad's bring up a great point of the the new meta right now is is two ADCs, one off lane and one dual lane. And those two ADCs, you know, using Titan Slayer, it kind of just negates a Severog. Not to mention the demon sword that the jungler is probably using. Bro, I've seen there's plenty of people running demon sword on solo too. Yeah, I, it's I, it's it's fucking sad because I think if if people weren't such goddamn pussies that 
fucking just pieced out of every game 20 minutes in because they think they're going to lose, I think Sev would shine. I think if Sev was given enough time to shine, he would shine. But the way Fault is played now, everybody fucking quits like a bunch of little pussies. So <laughs> he never gets that time to shine. So I think he's C tier. If he had the time to shine, he would be fucking S tier. Fucking S tier. But you got to be mindful underrated. too. For a game that's trying to get their average game time to be like half an hour or less, you're literally saying our optimal games have no room for a sev run. You get me? Yeah. Right. It sucks. Like you they they gotta find out a way to get him online sooner, but then that presents the problem of a sev that's him. online too quickly yeah. is him fucking disgusting. Too, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's like he's like a character that doesn't fit <coughs> what they're trying to make out of fault. Does that make sense? Yeah, I yeah. see it, see it best. I'm sorry. Yeah, a good and, a good chat, is disgusting. Is D. Well, that's a rig. You can see it says rig this, please. It's a rig. Yeah, it literally. Uh, whoever whoever set up that poll needs to be fired. Confirmed. Right. Um. <laughs> 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 Fired. Oh, foolish. That's the funniest fucking thing you've ever said. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll keep him down here. I really think he's he should be higher. He should be higher. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't put him down D tier. I wouldn't. I would. I mean, you want, I don't think. You want to pay, it, back well, up? Well, yeah, well again, a, a let's, just, let's just remember what we said. D tier is if you pick this hero, you're throwing. It's a guaranteed loss. I don't think picking a sev is a guaranteed loss. No. But there's that lake in condition. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it just depends on, you know, I, that's something we were talking about. Like extremely we situational? Off, yeah, see. We were talking off camera is that sev's stacks are so hard to get for people who don't, if you're not, you know, and like the one thing that D tier that we that he put is, is only for mains, pretty much. So if you're a sev main, you know, you, you can stack, but like, it's so hard to get your stacks with him. Like you have to like land that it's, it's last hitting for an ADC, you know, and you have, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Um, and then the amount of things yeah. you can get stacks with though is, is beneficial in that regard. But I just think it's, uh, I agree with you in that regard, in the, in the sense that it's like, you don't get that until late game, you know, it, it's, <laughs> unless you're somehow able to just, I mean, I've seen Russ, you know, come in, you know, have some games where he's getting stacks like 18 minutes in or something like that. I'm like, Holy fuck. How are you full stack that early? You know, that's insane, you know, but, uh, so it's, it's a tough one. He's, he's a tough character to, to get a hold of. And I think that's why I bring, I, I was saying, you know, that B, uh, B tier, you know, so, Everybody else is kind of saying a little bit lower, so I'm okay with putting me at C tier. All right. Now I kind of want to put him like low C. Like maybe not Drawing quite at D, but yeah, because you brought up a good, like a great point. Like if you're considering D to be like only the mains can play, I don't feel like only sub mains should play sub, but I feel like only sub mains are going to be great at sub. Does that make sense? like absolutely astounding like if you're those few players like yeah you might you might be killing it as Sev, but anybody else that's killing it in another character might still have an advantage yeah. early to mid game and that's usually when the matches are in so rip oh that makes me sad because i think there's so much more potential with sev but We'll move along to Sparrow. Sparrow is one of the very, 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 very few that I think is S tier. I think you have to either learn her or learn how to play her. Learn how to play against her, I should say. Why do you have to learn her? I guess I'll, I'll ask that after we, we put our little you know, situations. Yeah. But um, I I'm going to say A. Oh. Well, that's funny because I, I was actually going to say like, like, like maybe with her feet in A, like, <laughs> like you feel me? She's she's like hella up there, but maybe not all the way into the red. Like right there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like about there, you know? Because here's, here's the thing. She is way too fucking dominant, especially with the phase out there. Because the Sparrow phase combo has always been disgusting, yes. right? Yes. So the fact that that's in fault now is still disgusting. And I don't necessarily think she's an instant win condition. That's why I kind of lowered her a little bit, right? But I do think if there is a Sparrow, that's a big advantage. All right, Goose, why do you th- why do you have to learn her? Because uh, people severely underestimate Sparrow, especially with FaZe, and FaZe is so dominant right now in the meta. Like, she just boosts Sparrow with her ultimate, and, and, and Sparrow shreds teams. Like, she shreds teams. Like, Murdoch ultimate, yeah, that can kill one person. Twin Blast ultimate, yeah, that can kill one person. Sparrow's ultimate, you can kill multiple people with that shit. Like she's always been really good, and I and I feel to be underrated. With Phase, she's even better. She's even better. I mean, she's got a slow in her Q now. She's got a slow in her R and B. Like that. That was always Sparrow's her biggest stacking dra- attack speed. Yeah, that was always Sparrow's biggest King. drawback was she didn't have any kind of crowd control to help her out. She doesn't even fucking need it now, but she had, but 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 she has it. She has slows, which isn't great crowd control, but it's it it is crowd control. She doesn't have any escape though. She doesn't need it. the The current meta of she's damage so is so squishy, strong, and she's got no escape. the current The current meta of damage is so strong. She literally, with it's just as soon as she gets Sword of Souls online. She already nat- natively stacks attack speed, right? Anybody building king on her is also natively stacking attack speed. You get what I'm saying? Like when you combine the ability to be able to do more damage per hit that you land, when you combine the fact that her ultimate hits multiple people at once, the stacking attack speed on top of that, and if you for some reason get away, she's got a snipe that'll chunk the shit out of you in a damage meta is disgusting. I'm not saying she's not. I'm. Not, I definitely am saying she's she's up there. I just don't think she's S tier in the regards. And, and chat's asking about who what carries have an escape. I mean, I don't mean like escape as in uh, like you know literally just get away, but like Murdoch's got his knockback. Twin Blast has got his uh, uh, the dash. Uh, the dash he's got. Um, and you know, I guess we, we could say Grim doesn't really have one, but he's got the shield. Gr- Grim has displaced. Grim has you know, displacement, also has displacement too. Yeah, so like oh, he he technically I mean, has a knockback. She of his first. doesn't have that, and she's the squishiest out of all of them. So you get on top of her, she's done. You know, and people saying though, you know, she doesn't need so late game. She doesn't need that. Well, you got to get to late game first, and if you are just being uh, oppressed the whole time, what you you can't. It, it makes a difference in that situation. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she has the strongest poke as a carry. Like that uh, right mouse that, button. With that right mouse button, that piercing arrow. I'm pretty um, sure that right mouse button, just like, for example, Sword of Souls only on every carry, right? I, I might have I'm to disagree pretty, only because I think uh, Grimm's poke might be a little stronger depending on what uh, what uh, mode you're using. See, but I don't, I don't the, know the exact numbers. I'm just saying I think they're I got close. you. The, the reason why I was saying it is because I know Grimm's scaling on his poke. I'm pretty sure, and I, I'd love if somebody fact checks us, but I'm pretty sure Grimm's poke, the actual scaling, like how much of that percentage transfers to the poke is less than how much of the actual power being built gets transferred to that right mouse button on Sparrow. You know? No idea. No idea. And D Trigger saying Blood Saber, like, all right, but we're talking about this the, the the hero themselves and the kit they have, right? Yeah, you can build Blood yeah, Saber. Every, you can every build carry blood, can have Blood and, Saber. And you can yeah. put Blood That's... Saber on there, but the, the other carries don't have to build Blood Saber. So now you're taking you're taking an item slot away from me, from me of what I can build and and do more damage with or do or be better with and i have to do it just so i can now have an active to be able to escape uh it, it takes away from that so but the um, only poke on a carry i think here. the only poke on a carry i think does more damage than sparrow right mouse button 
is the Murdoch ult, and that's not reliable source of damage because it's right. like every no, minute or so, right? Right. Yeah. The, yeah. Cool down on that, and and it's you know you got to think um, with Sparrow, like how much do the other ADCs benefit from the supports ultimates? Like Sparrow benefits from Decker's ultimate because everybody's grouped up, they're in the same place. She can just waylay uh -huh. through them. Sparrow yeah, benefits from Narbash's, Narbash's ultimate because everybody's slowed, everybody's in the same place. She blasts right through them. She benefits from Phase's ultimate because it just makes her ultimate Attack faster. Attack movement speed. And, and she and she's just stays on top of them and blasts right through them. Like the only one she doesn't truly benefit from is Muriel, I guess. Well, but you, then you got to consider Muriel's a box. Muriel's more of a boxer support. If Muriel's landing those basics, that means that whoever the target is, is getting chunked out even further. And as soon as Muriel lands an ability, now they're rooted in place, yeah. which is just perfect for a, a Sparrow Snipe. Yeah, I'm saying everybody, everybody benefits pretty much equally from Muriel, but Sparrow benefits more from every other support's ultimate. I'm, I'm just going to put her mostly yes, but not all the way because she's not make or break. But having a Sparrow on your team definitely puts you at an advantage in the current meta. Not even not even necessarily just kit wise. It's just scaling wise as far as everything, because she was designed around not having sort of souls on the field. You feel me? Right, and that's why yeah. she kind of felt a little bit underwhelming. But once that flat raw power got inserted into the game, she just took off. It's it's just an item that's too fucking strong on her. Pull said A at seventy percent. Okay. I I think she's a S in that like I think she's at Kalari spot halfway S halfway A, um and, and the reason being is because I I I think a Kalari yes, it, you know I I think I, majority of this game is is either good or decent Kalaris and it's <laughs> it, it, you you're gonna you're you're doing really well in that game. You might not win it, but there's a very good chance you're winning it. You could have almost any ADC going against the Sparrow and you have a good chance of, of countering that. Yeah, she's strong and she's really good, but it, it, she can be countered um, because of her being so squishy. So I that's why I want to put her in between that spot. But yeah, I'll put her a little bit above Kalari, but I'm not going okay. to sink her all the way in the A tier. <laughs> she's, all right. she's the best carry right now. By far. Interesting. All right. I agree. She is the best carry. I do agree with that. Steel. Poor Steel. <laughs> F. <laughs> Put Steel at D tier. Even though I've seen some really great, really great support Steels and some half decent jungle Steels, like we said with D tier, they got to be your main for you to be really good with them. And I, I'm, fuck, man. Steel is in a bad place for me. I'm with Bren Bren. I'm playing Steel only after 18 beers. <laughs> the, like, I'm yeah. I'm not going to. Like, it, the, the amount of CC, uh, of CC that he provides is amazing, right? Right. But I, st I just feel like he got the Quang treatment. There was so much going on with Fault. All these Wrong. other characters getting adjusted and everything. He just kind of disappeared. The only reason Quang is even rated C is because damage Quang could still kind of work. He, I just, like you feel me? I don't. <laughs> how many people are gonna run damage steel? Be real with me. Right. He has to put himself out of position to do almost everything in his kit. Right. His ultimate. He's diving right into the the, the line of fire and putting himself in bad position. And like, hopefully you land your ultimate. Right. Uh, and then everything else, like he's got to be up close to be able to do this shield bash. He's got to be right up on him. Uh, the, he's throwing himself into the, the fire when he does that shield slide or whatever you want to call it is, you know, like everything he's got to do, he's got to be right up in there and it, it, it puts him out of position. And if he doesn't land it, it's just, it's easy countered. Uh, his ultimate scares the absolute dog shit out of me. Once it's used and probably missed, I don't care. I don't care if yeah. I steal. You can't rely yep. on just your ultimate to be an effective hero. Um, God, 
I love steel well, too. And it's actually Again, decently man. countered too, because as soon as he goes up in the air, just run forward. Yeah, true. That's probably the easiest way to counter a steel ultimate. Because he's aiming for where you're at or far where you're back, because you're usually backing away from like, oh shit, steel's getting ready. And then as you as soon as you see him go up, run forward. Because it's most likely you're gonna get out of that spot where he's he's gonna land. There's times he's gonna hit it, you know, he'll get he'll still get it, but like that's your best chance of of dodging it. I love Steel in fucking Paragon too. It's just it's kind of sad to see the state he's in right now with Fault. I think patch thirteen right. or uh, like early in the patch thirteen, he was really good. I thought he was really good. Like um, uh, what what's his name? Angel Laws plays him really good as support. But like I'm saying, D tier is kind of like for mains. Like if you're really good with Steel, yeah, you're gonna have a huge impact on the game. Like. But you gotta be fucking like top one percent with steel to have a huge impact impact on the game. Otherwise, you're not gonna be doing much. Yeah, I mean, if you can land the ultimate, then awesome. But all it takes to counter that ultimate is bot D, and you might say, "Oh, well, you have to have an item to counter steel." Fucking every support runs bot D. Like that's the first pickup for every fucking support. Right. It is also under the assumption that the enemy team isn't already in the lead because you've been waiting for level six of steel to make a real impact, you know? Yeah, you can't do much until you're level six because that's your engagement Gotta be. pretty much. I've seen some decent ones. I just think in the specific way tank items are right now, even though they're in a much better spot, right? I don't necessarily think that he's doing too well. Like at best, I might put him C. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like I said, he kind of got the quank treatment. It's just right. at least I see people trying and succeeding with quank as opposed to like Mangus was saying with steel. Bro, you're either trolling or that's your main. It's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's pick steel just for the fun of it. We'll see how it goes. And then half the time, it's I, like I, when I watch streamers play steel, it's just like, yep, yep. That uh, match didn't go as we <laughs> wanted. It's 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 rough to play steel. I think right now, D trigger because the, the worst the, passive in the game changed my mind. What is his passive? I don't even know what his passive is. To be hundred percent honest with you, he said his passive doesn't exist. Lamau, <laughs> man, I'll tell you what though. Like I I still only think the the only valid place for him is jungle, right? And even then. I still rather have armor other junglers. CC. Okay. Gives energy armor on CC stacks. Okay. I I don't think he's D tier. I was joking when I said F. I would definitely say he's C tier because his kit is really strong when able to apply it. Um, but so I, I would definitely put him C tier, but like again, he's he literally you have to he's like Severog, you have to wait till he gets online, and he's not online until six until level six, pretty much. Now he gets online before Severog, obviously, because Severog needs to get those stacks. But yeah, I mean that's so I would say C tier. Yeah, honestly, since you mentioned that, because again, we got to keep the rest of the board in comparison. Would you prefer a Quang or a Steel? Uh, for what? <laughs> for no what are you on asking your like team. on, on, on your team? team let's just say whether it be solo I, whether it be jungle let's just focus on solo rather, jungle right now i would rather have a steel you rather have a steel team. over a quang on your yep. team what about you Mingus? Yeah, not as a support i don't want to steal support I, you know, i'm talking about like offlane here you know or jungle I yeah let's, let's assume if, solo jungle quang support versus steel support <laughs> no i would take not at all i would take steel support over quang support but uh I would take Kwong offlane over Steel offlane any day. I would take Kwong jungle over Steel jungle any day. Um, I think a well played Kwong is far more effective than it, more far more effective than a well played Steel. Would you prefer Sev or Steel? Sev. What about you, Bearded? Uh, I. I I would definitely rather have a steal, but again, I'm 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 basing this off of you're asking me. Like I'm an ADC man. I want the, I want all that CC. Give me that CC, please. But I don't want him as a as a support because again, we where I'm stuck here waiting until he's level six before I can do anything. You know, give me as a, give me a, him as a jungler or an offlaner, 
and you know let me have decker as my support or a phase as my support you know and and uh bring him over you know in team fights or as ganks and i would rather have that cc okay interesting so, uh what did uh, what did chat put him at the poll majority did b uh then c and i think i was saying c tier uh when do what were you saying i i said d quite yeah, frankly okay. yeah i'm with the like he, he, so we're going he provides a lot of utility but yeah. even even in jungle like Hurts as far as clears are concerned and stuff like i just in the current meta i wouldn't maybe before yeah i would have rated him way higher but currently i yeah. i wouldn't hurts my fucking soul because i love steel but oh well last one last man last man last man you airborne bubbles grouping. will get that shit Look at this grouping. That's crazy. Twin Blast. I think Twin Blast is pretty solid A tier. I put Twin Blast right there as viable as Bellica. Not as good as Decker. I mean, not, I'm sorry, not as good as uh, Sparrow. But if you pick him, it's not a bad pick for sure. I agree. He's he's feel sad for Murdoch. That's a rip. Hmm. That's where he's at, though. I mean, I, I, I as said a Murdoch main, he's my, he's my main. Believe me, that's my, that's my boy. Like, but I definitely feel that that's where it lands for sure. I definitely feel like Twin Blast has been the best treated carry throughout, like <laughs> since the beginning of Fault. He was their the first carry. Now. Yeah, like since the beginning till now. He's never been in a, oh, you don't want to play Twin Blast. He sucks. You know? He's always been in at least a decent spot. But, right. yeah, he's he's not bad, especially with some of the stuff we got going on right now, like Sword of Souls, Rogue, etc. He's not a bad one to throw out there at all. I'll have to look it up again, but I played Fault. The first time I played Fault was, I think, it was November or October of 2018. And I played Twin Blast. I guess I'm not. So Sounds he's, about right. He's been around for a long time. True. He was in there, bro. Now, could, do we want to make some adjustments here? Yes. I think we do. <laughs> I think we do. Can we look at the... Can we just go in the same order? Can we look at that bear positioning? So, Boris, we got him at A tier. Do you think it's he's just, A tier? I want to I drop him down a bit compared to the to too. the rest of the lobby. Like it, he was the first one that we started, you know, we just kind of went with it, right? But I think because my original justification was a bear with a couple items takes off, right? Right. I mean, same argument could be made elsewhere, right? We agreed not to look at just this the the individual characters. Like we'll take the scaling into consideration and such, but. I, I I don't think he poses as great of a threat as a Countess does. You get what I'm saying? Or as a Sparrow does. Or like the Bellica Twin Blast. Like, I think he's, he could be dangerous, but it's, it's not necessarily as good. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you say, Bearded? Be Bearded looks confused, I'm, though. No, he's, he's like I was reading... I was reading chat, um, but I I think he's strong. Um, I don't think he's too strong. You know, I know a lot of people in, in the community think he's, you know, S tier OP that needs to be nerfed and stuff, but I think he's in a good spot. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm okay with him, you know, if we want to drop him down to that A, B tier. Like, I think, I mean, he's not uh, unstoppable. You know, he has ability that makes him unstoppable, but, uh, <laughs> but that's it, you know. Yeah, I'll be real. I can't remember when's the last time I seriously had a big problem with against the bear. Like it was something that you could work around or work with your team. You feel me? It's not like I oh, like Kalari. Like uh, guys, I died behind you. Turn around. <laughs> like, <laughs> so D trigger over here being a Kalari main, you know, is a really anti Boris person. So <laughs> yeah, you can tell those Kalari mains they really don't like the Boris. Uh, Countess, do we want to keep her at mid A or we want to raise her or lower her? I think she's good where she's at. 
I would lower her, but... Really? How come? Like I said, if she doesn't get those early she's kills, she's everything. fucking useless. Well, I mean, it, well, we gotta adjust, because we've been going on, right? So, hold on. So, let's just compare against the, the average here, right? Mm-hmm. Would you prefer a countess or a Gideon? Gideon. Gideon? And what do we hold on? I'm not I'm not gonna compare them. I, I don't think Countess is a a, a mid laner. I think Countess is a jungler. She's so strong in the jungle with this with 14 right okay, now. Would you prefer a Countess okay, or so a Boris? Ca- countess or the bear? Uh a Countess. I would countess. prefer a Boris. Countess okay. is gonna just, just literally just gonna melt people. Boris, you know, is uh, I don't I, I I definitely would prefer Countess right now. The way Countess, her wave clear and what she's able to do in, in the jungle now, uh, she's so strong. Okay, here's so, what I'm gonna say though: if Countess gets ahead, she fucking melts people. If Boris gets ahead, he fucking melts people. If Boris is behind, he still contributes to the team fight. If Countess gets behind, she ain't shit. Hmm. It's not, it's not a horrible like he, my answer would be I definitely would prefer the Countess but that's not a, a horrible way to look at it you know what I mean right like at least Boris is a body he you can still me? soak like, some damage if if he's behind just be like yay man bear build tank and just try to survive as long as you can hope the rest of your team can take over right you can't necessarily ask yeah, but the same from a countess. Are you? I guess countess, you could, but it won't be as effective. Countess can go in and sacrifice herself, get rid of the ADC, and now the rest of you, like it's your ADC versus their four. Not if she's behind. All right. So look, under the assumption, good players, right? Under the assumption that a good player knows a countess is rotating over because if they're good, they warded, they know she's coming. Right? Do you think that Countess is going to be able to get the kill on the carry? I I mean, it was, I think it's a toss up. That's mean, what I'm saying. Player, like, in, I think in it's a toss highly... up on both ends. I think. It, like, well, yeah, like... but in in a highly competitive game, the jungle getting 15 kills by like 20 minutes is not normal. Highly competitive game, jungle might have three to five in 15, 20 minutes. You get me? Because I mean, their players actually know what they're doing and they're gonna, you know, ward, they're gonna they're gonna communicate and be like, yo, careful left lane, retreat. And he's like, all right, bet. Like it, it's it's different. You feel me? It, all <sighs> but I, I will say though, I would rather have a countess on my team as a jungle than a bear on my team as a jungle. Okay. I'm thinking of it from a support perspective, like if a Countess and a Boris are on equal level, I have a much better chance as a support of shutting that Countess down and keeping her from killing my ADC than I do a Boris. Because Boris can go unstoppable. And there ain't shit I can do against unstoppable. Hmm. That's... It's a toss-up. I mean, honestly, if it's such a toss-up, should they be both equally rated then? Do you want to do you want to drop Countess down to Boris's level? I don't know. Now you got me contemplating whether we should have dropped Boris. <laughs> That's what I'm <laughs> decide. So you want to drop? I, I agree with them both being. Oh, an a. maybe. Uh, maybe Mangu said Boris Man. was B tier, B tier from the beginning. Maybe. No. B tier from the beginning. No. Well, okay, so let's easier. so let's look. At, let's just take a look at Boris again, real quick. What are the what are the other junglers that we're really comparing him with? Like, we obviously know Kalari's up there, right? I, but when we're looking at Grux, Greystone, Chimera, yeah, would you prefer Boris? I would prefer Boris over both Chimera and Greystone. Interesting, bearded. Uh, yeah, no, no. When I pick my junglers, I'm picking either Boris or Grux. Because I'm not good with Countess. So, yeah, when I'm going, if I'm actually forced to jungle, I'm fixing either Boris or Grux. So, yeah, I would definitely want him over them. Yeah, I, I still think he should be higher than Beater. Like, the fact that his yeah. lifesteal scales based off of his missing health and the enemy's missing health is ridiculous. 
especially somebody that can benefit so much from Sword of Souls, actually kind of nutty. So we're putting Boris back online with Countess. Do you want to raise Countess up? Yes, I do. Yeah, if, man, this was, this if this was pre, if this is pre if this is pre fourteen, I would have mm -hmm. I would have been okay with Countess being down okay, in that yeah. you know A B tier. But pre fourteen, Countess now, was 14. fucking trash, right? And but now with, with fourteen, she's up there. She's she's A tier in my opinion. And Giving I her the ability to blink an course. entire minion, increase her wave clear like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be real. Like the fact that it almost feels like Strange Matter struggles to balance the assassins because that is their goal. You feel me? To just show up, delete, disappear. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't rate any of the assassins lower than uh, just a flat eight, quite frankly. Right. Well, except Morgesh, because you want to put her in B tier. <laughs> okay, so we've got an established Boris, established Countess. Now, Decker. I would put her a little bit higher, actually, but. I mean, you could put her high age. I wouldn't put her in the S at all. But yeah, right, right there is fine. I'm okay with that. That I'm not. Uh, that's See, semantics, compare, in my opinion, well, but, with that. But it makes sense. I get what I'm just saying with I get what we're doing with we're trying to settle that. So I'm OK with that. I can handle that one. I think she's like I. Uh, keeping in track with the rest of the board i think she's already high enough for a support to prove that she's valuable but i would never start putting a decker as influential as a kalari or a sparrow you get me that's what? why i was okay I, i'm okay with having decker like mid a right but she's all like as far as supports go she's already the highest rated support by a decent margin like almost a full margin you get me mm hmm like we we don't necessarily need to move her up even higher because you really think Decker is better than Gideon or Countess as far as team comps? Yes, hundred percent. I can see in a, in Three, a damage burst meta, fucking hundred percent. Yes, she can she can limit that damage burst with her abilities. What she's got going on. That damage don't mean nothing if they're all behind a wall while you're running away. Or stunned. The Gideon's ultimate? Out. She cancels Gideon's ultimate. She, she can cancel uh, Countess's ultimate. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, as far as related to the other supports, I wouldn't rate her that much better, even though, she, in my opinion, she is the best. You that know what I'm saying? Though. I can't. That, that ass He's is like, the plus best ten ass points. in game. She plus does have the best points. ass in game. I can't. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I th I, 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 if you guys want, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's... I mean, I, I'm okay either way. I'm just saying, if you want to move her up, I'm okay with it. If you want to leave her worship we, where we had her in mid-A, mid, mid a, I'm okay with that. No, I, that's, no. To me, in my opinion, that's semantics. It. Make a fucking decision. Don't fucking wish you All watching right. me. Don't be funny. <laughs> I, I, uh, I did make a decision. I said eight here. We're good. <laughs> he said it's in there. It's it. <laughs> okay, who was next? I don't. I, don't, I, I done lost fucking. Right. Um, we got Grux, Greystone. Those two. I mean, can I? It's gonna be weird. Next after gadgets, next after uh, Decker. Yeah, 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 gadget. We got her at C tier. I think that's good, actually. Yeah, leave it there. Um, <laughs> I don't. I. Then I. I Gideon. I'm okay. I think Gideon's good today. Well, Gideon compared to Bellica, since they are both equally matched, that'd be a good spot to look at. Why can't they both be equally matched? Why does because one have to be better than because, the other? Because Bellica is better than Gideon. <laughs> In your opinion, I'm not saying you're. That's. I mean, that's fine. fine. That's your opinion. But like, why does one have to be better than the other? Why can't? They both be A tier. Why can't they both be A mid or whatever or A high? I don't care. But like, oh, they could if Bellica wasn't better than Gideon. <laughs> I can't with you, Brian. I think they're both great in that position. Like, I literally, I could leave them both right there. Okay. What do you say, Window? Sure. 
I mean, I I still would prefer a Gideon. Or like, I, I understand the utility that Abelica Gideon. provides. Yeah, I understand the utility that Abelica provides, but giving, again, giving her the fact that her drone does minimalistic damage, right? Mm -hmm. Taking that into consideration, I can't look at any part of Gideon's kit and be like, yeah, that part's lackluster. Like, even if we're looking at the portal, like your team can go through it. He can position himself in a good spot for the ultimate, et cetera. The, even, the portal alone applies way better utility and versatility as opposed to that drone. And then if we're looking at just flat damage output between the two characters, dude, a Gideon is going to be able to rock him, sock him so fucking quick. Right. Compared to the knock up Bellica combo. Like it, it still does damage. But that three rock on the Gideon is just too disgusting. Plus, Gideon can port the entire team off the map if he wants to. <laughs> and yes, yes, he can do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. He does laugh, but I can do it. I know. Uh, yeah, I'm laughing heard... because I've, it's, not the, it's not the first time I've heard you say it. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, after Gideon is Greystone. Well, 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 bearded real quick. Which would you prefer, right. Gideon or Bellica? On your team, uh, Gideon. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, raise his, his Gideon just a oh. touch higher than Bellica. Then, okay. <laughs> All right, so I guess next would be Grux, right? Grux and Greystone. Gray Greystone. Greystone is the next one. Then Grim. Then Grux. So, Greystone. I mean, I'm I'm happy with him where he's at. I I would actually rank him higher, but um, chat and you and I think Windu all three disagree. But yeah, I think with his passive, I think he's higher. I think he's a an amazing jungler for whatever reason. I don't fucking know. Like I don't know why he's a good jungler, but like when I see Greystone pick jungle on my team. Like, patch 13, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Patch 14, I'm like, cool, I got a Greystone jungle on my team, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't understand it. I saw it happening in 13, and it, it carried over to 14. I don't know the reason for it. I don't play the the hero enough to understand it, but yeah, I, it happened. I don't know why it happened. Well, they made him a more effective jungler by having his passive stacks scale from hitting jungle minions. So now he's actually getting active regen as he's clearing the jungle camp ridiculously fast. Okay. It's basically what it comes down to. Um, What are we talking about? Like just Greystone? Like where we think he should be? Yeah. Do we think he should move or not? Goose thinks he should go up a little more. Chat, when we did this first vote, said we he, we were we, we thought we were in a good spot where he's at. Apparently, Empty asked, who's, out of all these heroes, who's the one that should move the most? And they said Greystone. So we should do a revote for Greystone, I guess, to see where Chat thinks he should go. But um, I don't know. I I'm happy where he's at. Like I think he's that's a good spot for him. Uh, before like it was like what not thirteen? Yeah, before that little passive thing that he the change that he had, he was too W key and didn't have much going on for him. So I'd have put him more of like a C tier, like where Richter's at. But I think he's in a good spot. Could you go over like what we the categories that you guys had set for each tier real quick? So S tier so, is you either must pick or at least learn how to play against. A tier is a really good pick and you probably should learn how to play against. B tier is situational depending on your team comp. C tier is situational depending on your team comp and the enemy's team comp. D tier is only for mains. People that are really good with this hero will excel with them, but only because they are really good with that hero. I mean, I'll be real with you. But just based off of those, yeah, like Greystone isn't make or break. Like, he is situational. You feel me? Right. Like, pick him if you want. Somebody that's pretty tanky, but you still want to smack around. You feel me? So 
Sorry, like, let's don't... say you're picking somebody that you want to have a decent escape while jungling. Right I don't click. think he is a great pick, and you should learn to play him. Like, I don't think that's somebody that, like, like there's so many other characters that can be utilized in that situation. I don't think he's one that, like, hey, this is somebody that needs to be learned. Like, is that what B is? That's what A is. A tier, great pick, and you should learn the hero. B is a good pick depending on your team comp. And I do think he's a good pick depending on the team comp. I think he mm-hmm. fits that really well. Yeah, I mean, just somewhere in B. Like I'm. I, yeah, I think he's about I, as I, B I as B can get, really, when you when you define it by those terms. Which I yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it, re- it really comes down to the <clears throat> the definition that we're establishing here. Because people are like, "Yo, is he gonna do good or not?" S. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, like we have characters that are easy lock on, like Morgesh. That doesn't mean that a good player can't counter a Greystone. You feel me? Right. Right. Or like they can't counter a Morgesh. That's what I'm saying. Like it's situational. Yeah. So let's move. I mean, he is a nuisance to deal with as an ADC man. Like he, like you know, that that two life situation is gonna pain in the ass. Like man, I gotta kill you, and then I gotta kill you again. I get it, but I don't think he's, you know, that's about all he, that that's the what he's good for in that situation. So all right. Grux, I think Grux should be higher than Greystone. So I think he's better in the jungle than Greystone is at offlane, and I think he's better in the jungle than Greystone is in jungle. Hold up. You think Grux is better than in the jungle than Greystone's in offlane, and you think Grux is better in the jungle than Greystone's in jungle. So you said I don't know what the fuck I said because I'm pretty drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Grace, like, no, Grace, is that what, what Greystone is, that? is a better offlaner, but I think Grox is a far superior jungler than Greystone. I mean, as far as what he provides for the team, like you take kit wise, I would prefer a Grux. Hell yeah! But it, it's just my my only thing is after the passive change. That put Greystone at a whole nother level. It did. It really did. It helped him out a like lot. Like his his I like I have a build for Greystone that mid fight full tank, I'm regening 30 per second. Like his his regen is pretty fucking disgusting. Pretty disgusting. And I know for a fact that if a full belt Greystone and a full belt Grux get into it, there's a good chance that Greystone is making it out. He at least has the best escape. And as far as damage is concerned, they're both going to get in good damage. But correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure Greystone scales better in health. Maybe armor, I'm not sure. But I know Greystone has a higher health cap. I think he's the highest scaling in health in the whole game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Yeah, that's a 1v1. We got to think about the whole team. What's Greystone going to do that Grux can't? He's going to disarm, which can be absolutely amazing. But he's not going to pull and stun. He's not going to charge and stun. He's not going to stun. And Greystone, not Greystone, Grux, uh, for that time of his roar when he goes into his ultimate, isn't he immune? He uh, is immune to CC? to CC, yes. Just for that split second, yeah. It's Yeah, it's just that it's a split time. But that, I mean, if you time it right, that's... Greystone that doesn't have trauma, like chat saying also. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, as far as kids are concerned, I, uh, definitely Grux. Yeah. But I still think in the current meta and how the character is balanced, I think Greystone sits above Grux. Just at least the way that things are sitting right now. But if... Okay, it, I don't if, understand if how that act- makes sense to me. How, like, if his... If the kit itself like if we're is sitting better, here- then how, how does that hero not better than the other one that doesn't have the better kit? Because you're not taking scaling into yeah, application. There, there's like, certain things that just stand out. Like it doesn't matter how great the kit is. Sometimes something is just way better. Than like we could use else. Steel as an example. Steel's kit with all that CC, fucking amazing, right? But I still right. have like five other picks I would pick before Steel. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes the kits are good. It's just the balance isn't there. Yeah. The scaling, whatever it may be, the passive that they have, etc. Yeah, like I, I, about- I agree that Grux's kit is better 
like at just looking at black and white in the book but when actually in the game gr a gray stone just does can do more because you got to be mindful yes he has a yes grux has a pull yes grux has a, a knock up once those two are out you're waiting a good like what 10 8 to 10 seconds until he can do all that shit again Graystone is w key left click the entire fucking time yeah i still think grux is better than Graystone, but yeah i i totally agree you got like communism looks great on paper but it doesn't fucking work capitalism <laughs> looks like <laughs> dog shit but it fucking works <laughs> Graystone, Graystone is capitalism <laughs> and goddamn grux is a communist <laughs> but I'll take fucking Stalin in this one. I'll take uh, Stalin. Boris over, Boris over the Russian bear is like, what? I what am bear say? for you. <laughs> I am bear for you. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, Next yeah. is Grim. Where are we at with Grim? <laughs> Grim, <laughs> we had him ranked pretty goddamn high, which I'm happy about, goddammit. I think Grim is very underrated. I do agree. This is yeah, I'm. I think I'm okay with it. So am I. Like, and, and he has a versatility of being a mage if he fucking wants to. And he yep. chunks yeah. as a full blue Grim. And he chunks he as a full red Grim. Yep. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He doesn't uh, chunk as a full yeah, white no. Grim, though. <laughs> and he's got to be ranked higher mode. because, like, I mean, that snakeskin, Windu loves that snakeskin on him. So I think he's got to be ranked You better be quiet, well. bro. Mm. Mm. Grim is if we if this were a tier list of who got the worst skin in the game, Grim is at the top confirmed. <laughs> if they Grim would just, at the top confirmed. If they would give him an actual refrigerator with arms and legs skin, that would be that fucking... shit would have been amazing. That <laughs> shit would have uh, yes stainless stainless steel Grim. <laughs> okay, you know what we've talked about so many times with Fault is that Yo. they need to like branch out and like get some like. Some cross pollination with other IPs. Yeah, we need a bender skin. <laughs>